are live, fellas. It has been way too long. The last time we were together... Well, this is episode 20 in my book, by the way. So last episode was with Terrence. was over two weeks ago. It was two days before the wipe. And I felt like that deserved its own special edition category of an episode. Technically, it wasn't really hold the line. It was kind of the hybrid darkest hour hold the line iron mace round table so i want to call this formally episode 20 congratulations we made it boys time to retire we'll see you later Welcome all right it's been real Darkest hour is already on like 50 or something we're just gonna let him get away with that we gotta keep this going <laughs> Yeah, but they were like also doing this like before the game was out during the downtime and stuff. Yeah, they were cheating a little bit. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They, they, they were, were basically cheating. There was nothing yeah. to talk about. Like that was impressive. I can never you give that. them. You got to give them credit. No doubt. But well, yeah, a lot. I we have missed a lot. I I've, I missed I missed that roundtable. So like I didn't get to talk about the upcoming like big wipe or anything, and I missed the other or I delayed this most recent podcast because I was out of commission because of my CPU died. So like we have a lot to cover and uh, I don't know where to start. Where do you guys want to start? Um, uh, let's go Odin to wants patch to, notes first. Before we do that, I, I think that's a good place to start, but real quick. So because Ken did miss out, what Ken, what were your parting thoughts at the end of last wipe? I know you did have some frustrations and some not so positive feedback and Maybe you can speak to that briefly and then talk about whether or not that changed when the new wipe hit. So for me personally, my biggest issues with the last season was A, like the map rotation. Everyone agrees like that was garbage. That was a miserable time. Being forced to play maps you don't want to play is, is never a good time. Uh, B, the griefing rogues was like a huge problem last season, which I think is much better this season. I know people are complaining rogues so weak, rogues so weak. I know it's fucking nice, isn't it? It's fucking great. Like, I'm I'm sorry, rogue players, but it's like nice not having half my lobby full of rogues and just having it filled with like people bad, people playing the video game. It's like weird. Uh, and on top of that, I think uh, gear gear inflation was like uh, like the gear power level was mm -hmm. a huge problem last season, which I think is a bigger problem this season, which I'm sure we'll talk about soon. So like I think that's like the one area that they definitely have not. Uh, have not fixed is like gear being way too strong and creating a huge gap in power from people at the high end versus people on the low end and like you could definitely mm -hmm. feel it mm. but that, that's like my, my main takeaways my, my first initial thoughts on like the new season compared to the old season not a nice Copy that. Hot take yeah it's pretty it's a pretty safe take yeah no it's doubt pretty lukewarm take <laughs> yeah Jeff's calling out is all right, Odin. Don't worry, I'll get some hotter takes when we start talking about Wizard. Don't worry, but we'll, we'll save that. We, we have so much to talk about and so much time to talk about it because <laughs> they're supposed to. I, I heard wind that there was supposed to be a hotfix tonight from somewhere in the community because uh, SDF was like, we fucked up and didn't put the 2.0 headshot, which. I hope they never put that Let's in. Let's get to the patch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I'll talk about the headshot thing. I'm going to fucking freak out if that goes live. Dude, tar we're Tarkov. Everybody wanted Tarkov, right? You just headshot no. the guy. It's fine. No. Nobody's asking <laughs> yeah, yeah, for that. I, I, no. I've like explicitly said on this podcast before, like they should lower the headshot multiplier because mm -hmm. it's already ridiculous that you could have like an 80 base damage spell with 150% multiplier, then add flat damage on top of it. Like This is like textbook Petri dish for creating a one-shot environment that nobody wants to live in. And people are, are like saying like, oh, range is going to be OP with this 150% multiplier or 200% multiplier. That's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is like wizard fireballs. It's melee attacks, like high base damage, like a 45 damage falchion with like fizz power, like already having 80% scaling and then again, 200% on top of it. Like people are, slayers are just going to one shot you. It's not going to be fun. It, we're going to go back to the meta of whoever hits you first wins the fight. And that's always fucking lame. You yep. know, so I, I, I uh, that's a me molding about it before it's even in in game but yeah I mean, basically every every swing that. is a bsc yeah you can't reset it's just way too much damage no. and if it, a wizard it seems headshots like... you with ice a fighter headshots you with crossbow it's already the end of the fight they're a just warm one shot they you know they're way the fuck up and you're not going to be able to get that health back jay yes. i heard jay talking i was at work and i was watching jay he woke up and he's like 
reading the podcast notes or uh, reading the patch notes and his chat was telling him that the head the 2.0 headshot mod- multiplier wasn't in he's like dude what the fuck that ruins my plans for the day i was going stealth ranger i was just gonna one shot people with wind last all day <laughs> and my, my question is like while we're on this right is who was asking for this right like they they, yeah. they, they, they just threw this into the patch notes. i read it and i'm like I was so confused. I'm like, I don't think anybody wants this. I don't think anybody nope. was asking for this. And they just like, are just throwing it in just like, yeah, hey, it's like throwing a little 50% damage buff to every class. That'll, that'll be fine, right? That'll be fucking fine. <laughs> it's yeah, just a little. This, this was that, like, this is one of those things that I wish they would have done to the test server first. Mm, true. This is it's almost those... like the test server is there for a reason. I mean, um, the EA is the test too, and like I get it, it costs them money to run servers on the test server, and it diverts players away from the main game. But at the same time, this kind of change, like we, I, th- I think we were all pretty universally in agreement that it should be like one point two five for the headshot, and I think they could even get away with like seventy five percent of the arms and stuff because there's a lot of instances where you just hit yeah, someone's yeah. hand and there's really no control over it just because they were swinging and it got in the way, and I mean, let's let's shrink it down a little bit, not just go fucking crazy with it. Yeah, I like that. I like like one point two five for head, hundred for body, and like seventy five for arms, and maybe fifty for legs. Yeah, fifty for yeah, legs. That sounds but make fine. The, make the hit tagging for legs more. So if you are intentionally trying to hit somebody in the legs, that you, so you can stay on top of them, you slow them down more at the cost of doing less damage. I'd be totally down with that. Yeah, yeah I actually like lower damage on legs because there's like a lot of uh, like skill expression is as like when you're going to fight somebody, you know you're gonna get hit. You like you like I have no other option. Just jump, and I'll take like reduced yeah. damage. That's kind of yeah. cool and like a fun little mini game. I have faith, but... so I'll, I'll play the Iron Mace Homer here. I have faith that there is a method to this madness, and the SDF is secretly testing out, gathering data on what would happen if we had two X multiplier. Probably for the purpose of maybe adding a perk that allows for this which I still don't think would be a good idea, but I, I do have faith that this is not something that's going to stick around for a long time. One, for the reason you said, Ken, I, I don't think anybody's asking for it. I think it's going to be awful. But we do know that SDF wants quicker time to kill. I just I, I think the outcry is going to be enough, but I think the original tent may have to do with their desire to gather data. Terry, oh. Terry was on vacation for a couple of days, so yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I'm sticking up on this one, in. he can't stop me. <laughs> right. Maybe I this. Mean, like, maybe their plan, like long term, is maybe they want to make helmets mean more. Like that's the only thing I could think of. Like that they really want to do is they want to make like headshot reduction on helmets way more important. So things like hound skulls would get buffed. So you would definitely want you would definitely want to take a higher headshot percentage helmet over yeah. like a higher damage helmet. And like really fuck over the lizard players, you know. So I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I, just, I just don't know the reasoning. I mean, this morning they opened the floodgates economically, and so especially for solos with the five oh, by shit, five now. Yeah. So like you, you just make thousands of gold per round in items and loot. And if you're like, let's just say not bossing, you're you're making you know probably three to five hundred gold around. Maybe they want to make the entire loop faster, right? If they have more headshots, uh, you die in like just one or two hits now. Everyone's kind of creeping around the map. Maybe they they're gonna try. A uh, similar to Tarkov style approach where it's faster to get loot. Um, I will say, and I do agree with Katie here, that she said the 200% headshot multiplier helps Timmy's and mm. lower geared players kill higher geared players or have a better chance. Because if, if they catch you out and they headshot you, even with like a green weapon, <clears throat> you're probably going to be like two shot or three shot depending. And so it will help there, but at the same time, the geared players will just one shot them like all the time. Yeah, I heard, I heard overall, her say that too. I yeah. I agree. I agree. Like it does kind of help that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's it? like a double edged blade. It's like a it's a double edged sword, right? Huge double edged sword. Yeah. Because like now I could just like hit you with anything and you die. Well, yeah. the biggest the biggest thing is that now, like yes, in a vacuum, it's going to increase the damage that Timmy does, and it's not really going to change the the TTK for the high end gear player. Wow. But what it does, but what ends up, does end up happening is that now everybody who's in crazy good gear has much more move speed, so they can dictate the pace of the fight. So yes, Timmy can get a more headshot. vigor, right? right. More health well, in general. We're we're in this in this discussion. We're assuming that the damage differential is enough that them getting like an extra fifty health on their kit isn't enough to save them. It probably would be, but if you're movement speed like is king in melee fights so if you're trying to space somebody out and force them to whiff and like timmy's like dude i can die it's a 2.0 headshot i got a blue double axe i'm gonna one shot this guy and then you just go you missed and then swing at him it's like 
Yeah. I I like the idea behind it, but I don't know. It's everybody wants more skill expression in this game. Everybody wants more combat depth, and I don't think this is the right way to do it. No. So okay. just, just to pull the room. TTK. So like SCF. So mm -hmm. SCF said like he wants a faster time to kill. Like how do we feel? Because I've always been of the mindset that I I want a slower time to kill. I want fights to go longer, be yes. more drawn out, and have fun, interactive kind of play with my opponent. And I feel like you want higher TTK. Yeah, higher TTK. I always say faster and slower because I always fuck that up. So I'm dyslexic as yeah. shit. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so just so slower, bitch. longer yeah, slower. fights. We want longer mm -hmm. fights. Yeah. But, but how do you guys? You guys want longer fights or shorter fights? Longer, I want longer for sure. Fights. Okay. I can go both ways, and, and I could see where it could go both ways. I, I understand SDF coming from, like, let's make it more like a, a BR. Let's make it a little bit more like a roguelite and, uh, you know, increase XP, increase drop rate, increase the economy. That way you're just you're going fast, and it doesn't hurt so bad when you lose. Like, even right now, I just lost back-to-back yeah. -back kits, and they were pretty juiced. I'm like, oh, well, like, I made, like, 10,000 gold in the last, like, five lobbies. Like, I just buy new gear. I, I run it back. Well, 5 by 5 GC is extra boosted. It is great. But so, like, I don't know. I want higher fights because I like the 1v1. I like the chivalry style kind of back and forth, like the pressure, the peel, the heal, the comeback. But I, I also come from a BR background. So I, I'm understanding if we go to Epic, Steam, and consoles, there will have to be some level of speed, especially for console players, where, like, the fights just kind of, like, go quick and then you drop back in. So, so I, don't, I can go both ways. That's how you go ahead. Well, I... I don't know if it this could, is the right it could time work talk. as a BR, right? It could work with yeah. a, a really low TTK, and you're just you're like you're just going. Like it doesn't hurt that bad. You just drop back in, you buy some gear, you go. Yeah. You like especially because 200 percent headshot it's... damage on both monsters and bosses will overall increase the entire loop of the game. Bosses will be way easier, and PVE will be way yes. easier. I thought they so. said it was player only, but if it is for PVE, that's great because it does increase clear speed, and it, like it completely changes certain instances where like you now change like a three hit to a two hit or a two hit to a one shot against some mobs. It does mm -hmm. like gr greatly increase uh, PVE clear speed. I think the problem with increasing TTK outside of just being a little bit frustrating for fights to end so quickly. Um, oh, sorry. I said that backwards. I think the problem with making the TTK higher is that there are much more instances of third parties with the higher TTK and third parties. I, I would almost argue are more frustrating than just dying quickly in a in a straight up team battle, it's like you, you know the devil you know versus the devil you. Yeah, you know. I've always had a hot take. I love third parties. I know people <laughs> hate it, but I love getting third party. Like, sure, I die to them all the time, and it's frustrating. But like those times, you, after, like, you win, win a it's fight, yeah. you get third party, and then you win the third party. Like, mm -hmm. oh, like it's so fucking awesome. It creates really cool moments, and we I like understand that. that's frustrating. We like that, but I think there's a lot of people who don't. But who mm -hmm. knows? I mean. This is one of those things where I feel like they need to pull the community on. It's like, do you guys want lower TTK um, and more instances where you're going to risk getting third party? Or do we want a, or higher TTK, more third parties, lower TTK, fights are just over and you're ready to reset quickly? I think the community polls it, with stuff like that would probably help out a lot. But mm -hmm. uh, there, there's like a... So the thing I, was, I mentioned before about I wanted to talk about with Soma, I don't know if this is the right time to talk about it, we could circle back to this because I'd rather us get to the patch notes, but it does have to do with the TTK and the gear system. Um, but let's let's just—I don't want to derail with all that right now, so let's just jump into the patch notes. All right, are we gonna start? Wizards, wizards. All right, yeah, take us away, Ken. Talk, talk us about talk to us about the wizard. So they, did they change wizard? I don't know. I haven't played yet. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they they changed the. Uh... Wizard spell overload from the capacity from 70% to 60%, and they changed the spell count from 100% to 60%, basically meaning you can technically get more spells in your wheel, but you're not getting as many spells like from charges. Like, you charges as many charges as. So you would have eight fireballs before, now you have six, but it's at a lower spell memory cost. So that's interesting. Back to where it was when it first came out, which was 60% cost. Yeah, which is like, which makes you think they they actually want the 10 spell, spell overload build, which I think is actually very unhealthy for the game, because it's just a better version of 10 spell in every way, and if you have the gear, there's no you reason why you it. shouldn't, there's no reason why you shouldn't run it. It's just like, it's, it's just a gear check. Wizard had before, where you, and, and like, it's like a parallel to Torture Master Warlock, where you like, you play a different wizard until you get enough gear to assume your godlike form. 
and it's yeah. like it's a fun for the wizard player it's not fun for anybody else yes, i know a lot of people had a lot of like issues with wizard and like the wizards are so strong and it's all spell overload's fault yeah and i've always been of the mindset that it, it really isn't i mean it's a little bit spell overload's fault i had some issues i i will admit but i think a lot of the wizard strength it just comes from the fact that we have two all gear now and we have an, an additional like five plus flat magic damage and spell books can roll fucking 25 percent magic damage on them it, it's it's like these are the <laughs> issues why wizards strong and the fact that you nerf spell overload is not going to change that 10 spell wizards are going to be just as strong as five spell spell overload in in my opinion and like i'll argue that for a while i think the only problem with spell overload is six chain lightnings like that was the biggest problem yeah and yeah. and i was so, i admitted that the suggestion that i made and I, who knows if anybody heard it was to make it more reasonable uh but to make it a good choice for 10 spell maybe still make it a good choice for for five spell is to just give it minus 25 percent mem cab and plus 25 percent charges rounded up so you'd have you know five fireballs seven zaps seven ice bolts like an extra chain, an extra explosion or something. It's like one or two extra charges of every spell at the cost of 25% men cap. That makes it so like every wizard can afford it, basically, and in some capacity. I don't know how well that would be balanced. I feel like maybe it's a little too oppressive with 10 spell, but... At, I kind of liked where it was at. Small. Last patch, like when it was like 70% spell memory requirements, and but you still got the double spells, the but, then, but, but then you just like nerf chain lightning because just chain lightning is just fundamentally yes. a broken spell and it the more of them you have the more broken the class is going to be i feel like if you just had last patches spell overload without chain lightning to say it is temporarily disabled it to work on it or nerf the damage or nerf how it works and like i think that five spell would, would be fine i think the problem is like the 10 spell spell overload because that is ridiculous but once you're making <laughs> wizards choose between power and versatility i think that's good like yeah, Tenspell Wizard is is less powerful overall, but more versatile and has more utility. Whereas where five spell spell overload is more like mm -hmm. a sorcerer, where like you give up flexibility and like utility, utility. to just have raw power. And mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's kind of cool. And you would have you had like seven or eight different builds for Wizard last patch, and it was sick. I had like seven different five spell builds. Some were spell mastery, some are instant cast, some are arcane shield, some are staff mastery. Then you had the OG ten spell build. You had ball and dagger. You had staff. You had quarter staff builds. Like you had so many cool mm -hmm. variations of wizard that you could play because of spell mastery, or spell overload. And now they kind of neutered it, and it's maybe some of it's still viable, but a lot of those really cool, unique builds are definitely like watered down. And it's kind of sad that we lost them because of chain lightning. You guys played any wiz? A lot. I have, yeah. Josh Scott, any wiz? Yeah, I mean, I played my wizard at fifteen, but overall, I haven't really played wizard very much in a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt like they were they were pretty oppressive, but there were still a lot of classes that could outmaneuver now play them. But I don't know; it was pretty tough fighting a wizard. And now, since the patch this morning, I've seen way less wizards, way less clerics, and we're seeing a lot more plate again. Mm. But <clears throat> I don't really have a, a big take on it. I'm yeah, just going from the, the perspective. It. Sorry, sorry, yeah. No, uh, so I started with Wizard this wipe, and I'm sitting at 29 right now. And it's been, at times, it's felt really good. Other times, it's felt like a struggle. I think that's probably more of a skill issue for me, just not being a Wizard main for quite some time. Like, oh, I, I yeah. feel like I played 90% Cleric last patch, although the reality was, or last wipe, rather. I, the reality was I probably played 70% Cleric, 20% Fighter, and maybe 10% wizard, but it was probably near the beginning. And right now, I, I would agree with Ken. I think the, the versatility is really good. Um, spell overload felt fine to me. I agree with the, the chain lightning take. And they did do some things in this hotfix to address that, right? They reduced the spell charges and they got rid of the ability to chain off of dead bodies, which is good. I think overall for the game. I've been saying that for months, by the way. Yeah. That shit is toxic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that yeah. was yeah. that was something I said. On, I'm 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 uh like copium here that the SDF was listening when I was on Darkest Hour last week because he they literally changed exactly what I said. That was like they cut out one charge and make it so it can't chain off bodies, or at the very least, I wanted them to make it so it can't chain like around corners and through doors if it's going to hit a body mm -hmm. or something, or 
make it so it can't chain off of like your team your teammate for the first jump and like if you hit your teammate it's just oh really whoa, whoa, whoa. take it easy there okay, <laughs> well, listen the, the lightning coil shit is jay was jay was talking about it earlier he's like once like if it ever actually catches on and people start doing it it's gonna be so toxic oh it's very toxic i'm glad like yeah. that, but the video i made about chain lightning like, kind of highlighted how strong it can be if you abuse the fuck out of it mm. and like i'm glad it's gone because i do not want that happening to me yeah, yeah you, you can got... still join your teammates but we got rolled by Repose yesterday. It was me, my son, and uh, another guy that I play with. And we were just kind of chilling. It was, you know, just got off work. It was, it was the classic. Oh, there's Timmy who just got off a hard day's work, <laughs> and he's he's gaming in the dungeon. That, I mean, they're literally saying that on Repose's stream, you know. And Repose comes running in, super juiced. He's with Matt Gon's God. And we were just taking our time clearing this room. They they came in one chain lightning, hit both of my other guys down to like twenty five percent health. By the time I got off one heal, and we're in so we're in the the bottom right hand module of Inferno One, the Lich, right? And we're all the way across the room. They get from one end to the other because they had a bard. Repose was playing bard have their wizard and a warlock. They get the chain off. We're down to 25% HP. Before I can even get my second heal off, Repose is already around the corner. My other two teammates are dead, and I ended up healing Repose because I didn't think for a second there was any <laughs> way on their, t any possibility, anyone on their team could be this close to me because I had dipped around the corner. And it was shocking like the the getting back to kind of the the gear disparity thing like how much we weren't even playing the same game at that point but uh before i digress too much chain lightning won that fight before it even started and it wasn't even it it wasn't abused it was used i think in the way that it was supposed to i don't think they chained it off the hydra but uh yeah it it needed the nerfs that it got but i do like that lightnings uh, circle size was increased a little. I don't know if anybody can tell. I haven't tested yeah. it yet. 75 to 80 doesn't seem like very much. Uh, it's, it's pretty big. I was testing it today. It actually is kind of strong. I actually I don't like that change because I, I think Lightning Strike Well, Lightning Strike can be jumped. Well, Lightning Strike has like some of the least counterplay of like any spell in the game. Yeah. And the, the jumping jumping the shit is like super unreliable. It, with the server tick rates, it's like you might mm -hmm. you, you would think that you're jumping that thing. No, you're not. It, it's very very low percent success chance like sure you go for it when you have to but lightning strike does like 80 damage and you just can't block it and it's like not hard to aim i think it's like super a super unhealthy spell when it's strong because if somebody is shooting lightning strike at you you don't have an option even if you have a shield so mm -hmm. that, that always feels bad like your fireball you could block it's a projectile you could dodge zap you, you could stay out of range like and you know try to duck it but lightning strike is they just aim at your feet and you take 80 damage, and then you're slowed, and then you die to the next spell. So, I mean, I was kind of happy when they nerfed it, and that's, like, coming from, like, Wizard Player. I, I kind of like where it was at. Yeah, same about with that. Holy Strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to mention Holy Strike got the same nerf, and I I, I saw Enboss in the chat. He was like, rip Cleric. I'm like, dude, they needed that. I've been... Ah, uh, so bad. I've been yeah. playing Cleric, not, like, only Cleric for, like, last week or so, and it's like, you... If you see a cleric with like a couple play pieces and he's fast enough with the spell book out to just run at your team with a holy strike, you're like, fuck. Because he just hits the holy strike, blinds your whole team, catches up to you, judgment, holy strike again, you're dead. And there's the, the only way that you stop that is if you have a cleric of your own who's able to get their holy strike off to retaliate, or like mm -hmm. you nail all of your range damage and you stop him from coming in. It, it was too much. Then it definitely needed to be more of a skill shot. I feel like maybe they could. <sighs> I, I don't know. Is the the yeah, I, th I think you just time... give it more. You just give it more. I think like I think you, you keep them small because I think it was way too easy to hit. Yeah. You was like and a brain a five. blind person a blind person right. can hit somebody with a holy strike. Like, you can no, offense, no offense people. to blind people. That's the problem. Yeah. You get multiple people, and right. it made it so that like fighting in hallways and doorways and stuff against the cleric was so miserable, dude. Yep. Yeah, you just give them five charges, and like now they have more range tools, and mm -hmm. but it's like higher skill ceiling. I think that that would be fine. Fine compensation. It's Hopefully just holy they, lightning yeah. strike at this point. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, they, the, de they... the delay on it makes it hard to hit, honestly. Like now with the I mean, circle, the what it is. Strike, right? 
It's, it's very it's similar. A, it's like mm-hmm. almost identical, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was the issue was they buffed it, but then they also added faithfulness, and then they increased how much plus magic damage right. you get. So like, it just basically constantly got a buff. And I love faithfulness, impressive. by the way. I love it. Good spell. I also like the effect yeah, of it. They did a yeah, way better cool. job with all the effects, um, like the noises and the effects, so you can actually figure out what everyone's using. Yes, mm-hmm. overall um, quality of stuff like that is way up this patch. Mm-hmm. I really like it, or like since wife, I should say. Uh, I'm just reading the patches. I didn't realize that they nerfed bless again. What yeah, the hell? five yeah, to three. Five to three. What the frick? They yeah. also nerfed. Since we're on the topic of casters, they nerfed the knowledge spellcasting speed curve. Um, I haven't played today, so I, I don't know what that looks like. I'm going to find out after the, the podcast I'm going to play some, but I've been hearing people say that it feels bad. And I hate it, yeah. I, like, is it, so, so where did it get nerfed? Did it get nerfed on, like, the lower middle end? Because that's probably where it needed to be nerfed the least. I'm not sure what the exact curve is. I just know, like, you just notice it when you're playing. It feels, mm-hmm. like, substantially, I would say, like, 15%, like, slower. If I was, if I was just, like, last patch Ew. with like a 45 knowledge kit which is like pretty good but I, I just don't like them nerfing cast speed or like even attack speed and or reload speed things like of that nature that affect how the game feels if like something is too strong if wizard is too strong or healing is too strong i rather them like nerf the numbers on like heals or the damage on spells than ner- nerf how casting spells feels and making those things feel clunkier i feel like it's just the wrong approach to nerf something. Yeah, I, I I tend to agree that whenever you make something feel worse to play, it's just generally not a good thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, cra- what a crazy, what a crazy, what a hot, what a hot take. <laughs> um, let's see, any other specific changes for casters there? I mean, warlock. warlock. Yeah. Warlock got their dark reflection change, so now it consumes all their soul stacks. People are saying rip Dark Reflection, but it's a dead perk now. I don't know if that's totally true, but it definitely got a fat It, it kind of is. It's hit by a mob. It. But, I mean, the, the, why even leave Dark Reflection in at that point? We, I think the general consensus from the community has been since day one, why is there a zero interaction ability where you just take damage for hitting the Warlock? It's There's no skill expression. It doesn't change the way you play against the warlock in any way except that you just go i'm not allowed to fight this guy if i don't have the hp to tank his dark reflection let's get rid yeah. of it give him some yeah, else yeah. i'm a warlock player and i use dark reflection from time to time and like i will admit playing as a warlock like it doesn't feel good to be punished for hitting my opponent yeah it's fucking like wild. like when i when i hit my opponent that that should be a good thing not oh i'm dead now <laughs> because i hit you so i mean i don't know i'm, I'm a warlock man so i i actually like DF. More like, get the fuck out of here. PR. I, I love Dark class. Reflection. <laughs> yeah, I do, but th- this way, by Manning Warlock. Oh, oh I'm um, a Warlock man too, dude. I'm swapping. So I, don't I, I think the stack change is really good. I don't think it affects my play style. Like, after looking at the perks today, I, I still think I take Souls and I still think I take Dark Reflection. Obviously, it's a, it's a huge counterpoint at the low end. It's going to really punish um, the less skilled players because, again, if you get hit in PvE, it's gone. First hit, it's gone. So now, now players can just kind of cut you out. But as like a, a phantomized spell warlock, it didn't affect me because I usually just consume my own stacks anyway with shield or a bolt or, mm. or whatever. And so I'll probably not have it. Like the main reason I liked dark reflection and stacks is just to prevent somebody sitting in a doorway or a rogue from hitting me and being like way, way the fuck up. Now I'm like, okay, like my stacks are gone, but I just hit them for a lot. Now I can hopefully trade. And so there, but I think on certain classes, like I think demon is in huge trouble with that change. Well, don't you just not take Dark Reflection on Demon then? Yeah, you don't take Dark Reflection. Yeah, you probably don't take that anymore, which right. is kind of cool because now at least, you know, Dark Reflection in Souls was like mandatory for almost all forms of Warlock. Now at least we have some more build diversity, at least in perks. I think Demon Lock is something, by the way. Like, full it plate is Demon Lock is one of the hardest things to kill in this game. It's so scary. They are so tanky. Like, they don't do much damage. Like, they'll like whittle you down eventually, but like, they are just hard to kill. I watched a, a all grays squire demon lock yesterday plate kill uh, like a giga juiced cleric that he fucked me up on like three different resets and I finally just left and took a blue. I was like, no one's gonna be able to kill that guy. And a, a, a gray demon lock went demon for him and just scratched him till he died. I was like, <laughs> okay, so all right, like let's go. It is great, gray is the best. Wait, so the I haven't played much demon this swipe, so that works with like the, the shadow. The shadow perk that heals you on melee hits. Yep. 
What's that, what's that perk called? I forget. Shadow touch. Shadow touch. Shadow touch. Oh, so you 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 like sustain your warlock farm almost form. infinitely if you're just mm -hmm. like constantly hitting something. Yeah, if you ever. Oh, I'm thinking about like cool. a really high dex build would probably be great. Oh, high dex, high add fizz. Wait a minute. And you scratch them out. Is there, there you can I know you can't scale with magical healing. Does that scale with like physical healing or anything? The, it, it can't. It can't anything. scale. It's true. Uh, which can't be scaled. Okay. It's probably it's probably for the best to be honest. Yeah, I can see that being a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'll like imagine like Rogue that. with Shadow Touch, and then they just go full PDR and slash fucking sixty percent action speed, and they're oh, scaling it with like magic dude. and poison. Yeah, yeah on my would... crystal sword. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, man, that that would get that would get <laughs> out of hand pretty fast. All right, so the remaining changes: there was a minor change to the quick fire noise for Ranger Rogue's Creep, which we'll get to that in a second. Rogue Creep has a five percent extra bonus for movement speed. Yippee! And and the Barbarian's Rage has had their physical damage reduction penalty increased. So it was 20% penalty, and now it is a 25% penalty. So you're squishier while it's up, but you're 2% faster. How are you noticing that? I just saw you get... You you missed one swing on a on a fighter, and you died because of it. That's I mean, just kind of how it goes. I've lost like all my melee fights against fighters today. I, I feel like 25% is kind of a lot. Mm. That I like fucked my own PDR over. Um, and like it's it feels like my shouts aren't doing enough like the the differential there it, like it's a buff for movement speed but then it's kind of like a debuff on my armor You're um, trading... plus, I'm, I'm already going slow like i'm already going fast so I'm, I'm not sure like i feel like the faster version of the barbarian with less gear is more likely to die in melee encounters now especially because i have um treacherous lungs so like yeah that 25 percent pdr is just on me for like the, the entire fight Watching that fight back, I think, you know, he's slow enough that you would have been able to stay on top of him without rage. So maybe the answer there is if you didn't pop rage during the fight, if you just right. your Savage Roar, you win yeah, that there. So maybe probably. now. Or if I use this... my Vi because he had a Falchion. Yeah. So maybe um, you also just I missed now... one. So like I, I fucked up all over the place on that. That's true. Yeah. I mean, and then the, the other PDR fighter just parried me and hit, he repossed me in the head for like 70% of my health. So you were using Felling X, right? No, I was using Zvi. Oh, I mean, they're both really easy to parry. Yeah, I don't I mean, play much solos. Is like rage meta for barbarians and solos, or yeah, yeah I gotta yeah, catch everybody. It's, it's definitely not meta. And... All the magic, all the other. Well, yeah, because your your move easier. speed cap with your bard and mm. yeah, yeah. Or your I mean, all or whatever, all you know? solo meta right now is like 108 plus move speed, and everyone's just zooming around and like flinging spells. Like all the rogues are using like double hand crossbows and throwing knives. The barbarians have like a thousand throwing axes. Everyone's just fast. So let's talk. Um, I think we got through that pretty quick. Let's talk about. How we're feeling about the wipe overall. There's there's a big gear discussion uh, that I want to get to after we talk about the current gear system. Mm -hmm. And uh, I so bad you kind of mentioned before that like gear you come by gear so fast and you make gear gold so quickly that it 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 does feel less frustrating when you mm -hmm. get stat checked right now than in previous wipes because I feel like you could just drop in naked and as long as you are able to rat your way through the match without running into other teams. You can come into a pretty decent set, and if you get lucky and there's nobody in your lobby and you go Inferno, you're actually, like, kind of stacked by the time you leave a single game. It feels pretty good, but it does suck when you're like, okay, there's a juicer team with 75% PDR and MDR, their move speed capped, and they one-tap me. Now i got to go do that again. It's, it's like a little bit of give and take, but I do feel like the loop feels a little better this time around than it did when we were playing the, the, the gold gear meta where everything was crafted. Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's way better now plus with the quests uh especially if you come into a character late like starting a character today now getting to 20 is way faster and you have like this this absolute multitude of quests you can do and they're just pouring shit on you like golden keys yes gold coin and your bag, squire uh is squire it's like a bunch of xp it's a bunch of money like a lot of the time you don't even really have to aim at the quests. you just go to a map and you finish like a bunch of them almost accidentally yep. and so i think it's the thing is, trios will always be like its own beast with you saying everyone's at like these crazy PDR, MDR yeah. movement speed caps. But like in solos, even geared players, I feel like I, I have a pretty big chance against like the. There are a lot of things on the market that are, are budget based. Yeah. Like budget builds now can actually fight the top end gear compared to the past because you can get like Fox yeah. amulets with plus four add damage for like 90 gold. And I can get a necklace a piece with like plus two all for like 100 gold. So you can actually use like off meta weapons like a Bardiche or something uh, or like a Halberd. You can build an entire set for like 500 gold and be close to competitive 
with mm. these other players in certain situations, right? Of course, like the top end of gear is always going to be better. But I just think now it's like easier than ever to find shit. I, I played normals all day yesterday and I was just covered in like plus two walls. Yeah. Uh, like Dude, tons normals of plus was a blast damage. yesterday. That was yeah, a great like, time. It, it feels really easy to do one or two normals, either sell everything and keep going or just transition into HR and then just like swap around. Like it, it feels really good. Mm. So I think the gear situation, even considering like the, like, you know, people in six to 10 K in gear, at least in solos, I think it's manageable. And that there's yeah, a lot of the ways marketplace helps, right? Yeah. Like the marketplace is great. Quests are great. Drop rate is great. And especially today with them just literally turning the faucet on uh, gold is pouring in. That the that normals change is insane. It almost feels like they want people to go play normals mm -hmm. to just build up an insane amount of cash to buy whatever kits they want to go play. So that, that, that's what it should. That's what it, they should be doing. Yeah. Right? They should. That, they should. It, if you're new to the game or if you're having a hard time, you go to normals where the mobs are easier. You're not going to get gear stomped, and you, you're able to get gear, put it in your bank, get gold, go to the marketplace, level up, build some sets, and then go go into HR and like be viable at least. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are just like going into HR, me included, naked, sometimes like just zero to heroing and like getting stomped by a gear team and being like fucking gear checkers. But in reality, so I could have played a normal game and like it's kind of my like half my fault. I think mm -hmm. there is a gear issue at the top end. Like we'll talk about it. I think the the, the one thing that no, you're good. I was cutting you off. The the one I thing that is <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, you no. the one thing that I think like before it was a little disruptive to go into norm to break up your gameplay to go into normals because you're like well now i gotta go get like even even with the increased reward considered but now that you're also getting xp working towards your multi-classing while you're in normals it doesn't feel as like putting on the training wheels to go play normals you're like you feel like you're accomplishing a lot more by completing in normals because you're like if you clear a bunch of modules and you kill the boss and you get a bunch of infernal modules you get like 400 xp you're like making a lot of progress for your class it feels good Yep. What about uh, it's... Scott? How do you how do you feel about the gear and stuff? I wish I could argue because I don't want to just sit here and agree with you guys, but <laughs> um, that's spot on. I like when we got rolled by Repose. I looked at his gear; it was out of control. Like even if that, yeah, it, even if Chain Lightning didn't exist, even if Repose's two teammates didn't exist, they could the chances you, the chances that he would have been able to one v three us are extremely high given the gear disparity between us and him. Now, I also agree that I do think it is super easy to gear up. I love the changes to norms, uh, especially after this morning's hot fix. I played four, maybe five norms today, and I feel like a bad run in normals is 200 gold. If yeah, you're that, getting- that, that used to be your best run. <laughs> right, right. So that feels great to me and and like like you said you pick up a lot of experience you go down to inferno you can clear half the mobs in inferno if you're moderately skilled and yeah go bossing get a bunch of exp get some quests done like I, i'm absolutely loving the state of normals right now mm -hmm. high-end gear difference is is going to be an issue but I, I don't know what the solution is to that. I think plus two all on as many pieces as it's on is probably an issue. They need to tone that down, bring it back to where it's just select items that can get it. But I'm just hopeful that SDF doesn't want to ramp it up to plus three again. Like plus two, if you want to have it, fine. Minutes. Like yeah. if you want to just that... put it on a necklace or you want to put it on necklaces and rings, like jewelry only, maybe, maybe. but. It, it's just that's garbage. That. It's, gar it's fucking garbage. It's just a boring uh, stat. Like you're just gonna take it, and it, you see it with the price on everything. If it's right. a plus two all purple necklace a piece, it's like 10k. It, it is nice. Like it's nice that we're able to get gear easily and like and compete. But at the top end, the gear is just out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just way too strong. Like we've we've been here before. We've had we've had metas like before plus three all before plus two all, where like you can get crazy high flat armor rolls on pieces. And that shit was broken. Fighter was broken. Barbarian was broken. We learned. We got rid of it. And then we had plus three all meta, where we figured out that's fucking broken. Barbs yep. are broken. Wizards are broken. Warlocks are broken. We fixed yep. it. And then then our is like, what if we just like try both of them together? Like, surely <laughs> if we try both these off ideas together, 
like two negatives make a positive, right? That's how math works. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, like, that I is how know. math works, but that's not how <laughs> Dark and Darker works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I already I know as I know as is in the other room right now, and I already know what he's going to say. He's like. Well, yeah, but this gear is kind of cool because if a Timmy loots the plus two all necklace of bees, he gets 10k and he gets to go play with a cool kit. All right, I got you, SBS. Don't worry, you don't even have to be here on the podcast. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but, but even right. even like plus two, like like plus two base things are going for like I a just, couple I hundred. I but I know, I, I but, there's, like but there are lab crafted like pieces. It. it makes gearing boring. That's like the biggest problem. Like, sure, you can yeah. talk about the power level to ad nauseum and like like yes, it is too strong, but also it makes gearing boring because now every every chest piece leg just and necklace it. that i need has a prerequisite that it has to have plus two all minimum and then anything else on top of it is like the factor as if it's a good piece of gear or not which just makes right. it boring before yeah. like i would get a weird piece i get like a a frock with with added fizz damage and like magical power and vigor i'd be like hmm that's that's a weird piece maybe i can make a weird build around this but like now it's just there's no creativity it's like oh the two all good for everything Please. I'm glad you mentioned lab crafted. Have we had that discussion since we found out that they were going to hide the roles? I don't think we knew that when we talked to Terrence. Certainly not since we talked no, they, to Ken they, last. We we, we, we didn't was, know that, was, right? He's, yeah. So so Nate wasn't here when we were talking to them on the Darkest Hour Hold the Lot and Q and A, but he did mention that they were going to obfuscate the roles. So now you you just get random whatever the fuck you. You craft it, you get whatever you get. It's shit right. shit. Tough yeah, but luck. we haven't so we haven't talked with Nate since that happened. I would assume mm -hmm. he is a massive proponent of the randomization well, and yeah, yes and no. Because we've we've had this before where like gear rolling was all random for crafts and like mm -hmm. it was just never worth it. It was like super not worth it. I did an entire stream one day where I had an entire stash tab full of ruby silver and cobalt powder and I just mm -hmm. rolled them all, like hundreds of pieces, and like I lost ninety five percent. It was just the worst dog shit in the world. So like that system's not that's really not that great. With the but the new it, stat system, it might not be as bad though. It, it, it's like better than what we had because like there's gonna be less lab crafted gold pieces in rotation, which is fine. I, I would like them to like maybe show one roll, but like oh base type frock that gets dex automatically, and it'll show like the first roll like that'll be randomized or the, this one has two fizz power, and then the other two rolls are randomized. I think that's probably the best way you could do it. Or, or you can just make the if it's going to be 100 percent random, just make the crafts a little bit cheaper, so it's not as expensive to roll instead of it being 13 cobalt powder to roll a frock, make it nine, make it eight to like compensate for it being 100 percent random. So you're not investing a thousand gold to make zero all the time. Yeah, I th they they said they were increasing the drop rates for all the crafting materials, and they definitely have. They're I, they're because they're also quest materials you see way more of them. So I don't know if it'll be as bad, but you still will. The problem still is ruby, silver, and gold. There's still going to be a problem, I think. Like the investment versus the reward. Like how willing are you to make sure that the gear is going to be baseline good when you craft it randomly? If you're Iron Mace, how willing are you to make it? Like you're guaranteed to get at least something good on it. Or is it just like, are we just going to say... If you are a player of a caliber who is willing to to gamble your gold and ruby silver ingots and your high end crafting materials on this stuff, then you deserve to be. Playing oh, I'm stuff. a D Gen, so I'll do it, like for sure. <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose a lot. It, it, maybe yeah, it's their way about... to keep them in check. It's like you're 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 gold sinking, dude. It is a gold sink, but it's also like a jackpot because if you hit those pieces with plus two all, like you mentioned, uh, and you you nailed my take perfectly, it is cool to get plus two all. As drops, you just know its value. Like I, I sell every plus two piece I get. I really wear like actual bis because I do really good in like medium tier gear, and I'm just bossing anyway. So at some point, someone's gonna kill me when I'm bossing. Like it doesn't matter what your gear is. If I get slowed, yeah. boss is gonna one shot me. Like it, it is what it is. Um. Yeah, if you're just throwing your your gold and your ruby silver at it, eventually it's gonna come up plus two all with move speed on pants or plus two all in like armor. And, and, and that'll be a that'll be a drop in the bucket versus the hundreds of thousands of gold that you invested to get that. <laughs> Probably true. But like <laughs> lab crafts will still be there, but uh, overall, it's I think it's a really positive change. Yeah, um, it's something better. It's better than the previous system because like we don't want those crazy pieces so easy to get for mm -hmm. like no risk. Like so, like I'm, I'm in agreement there. I just think. 
there's probably like a middle ground approach they could go with, but this is like yeah. fine for now. I'm happy they're taking the safer side than like the egregious inflated lab crafted right. pieces of crafted gear side. I like so, the idea of being able to loot something from the, the dungeon that would allow you to identify one of the affixes on it, right? Like a like scroll a scroll That's of identification yeah. that you like cannot that. that you cannot sell, right? That you cannot put it in the marketplace like it has a looted status. If it's handled, it cannot be used. So, or maybe it could be like something that gives well, you a deterministic, like some one mm -hmm. of the roles is deterministic. I kind of like the idea of selling it because, like, then then all of a sudden it like, has like a price tag. Maybe it's like five hundred gold because it's like decently rare. Then all of a sudden, like, if you're like a crafter, that's like something. Oh, I have gold. Okay, I'm gonna that's I'm gonna fair. invest in the ruby powder. I'm gonna buy some scrolls of identification. I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna have like a cool little crafting session. Yeah, on that's kind of cool. That, that's that's great like POE. content, dude. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, content. that's true. That's true. Like, how about a gem? When you're mining, you can get like a ruby that's guaranteed to be health. You can get like an emerald that's guaranteed to be dex. You know, so that way you can actually. They talked you do... about they wanted uh, gems. They wanted like mm -hmm. socketables for the gear. So I could totally see right. something like that. Like when you're crafting, you socket one of those, so you're guaranteed to get that stat. But everything else is random. I can see that. Yeah. I love gems. Also, games. I agree with the arcane in that we can have plus two all limited to jewelry, plus two all on neck, plus one all on rings, chests, and legs can go. I say get it um, off it's of jewelry. Not that big of a of a change. Just plus two, just on chest, bro. That's all you need. Like the big chest piece. Mm, yeah. Everything else, I think it's crazy. But I hear you. It's just some kind of. It's way too much. Is the point you're trying to make? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yep. yeah. but overall, compared to last wipe, when you had like gold scarf, gold cloak, you're already at plus six all. Now you really have to go out of your way and like spend a lot to basically get what's the max now plus seven all. So I mean, it's there. Um, like you said, at the very high end, it's noticeable, but a plus eight all. But yeah, is it plus eight all? Um, yeah. it's it's still competitive. Like if you have non plus all stats, it's pretty close. And if I'll just say, if we go to two hundred percent headshot, they're gonna be killable. It's, it's not gonna help them that much when you almost one shot them with like a fucking crossbow or a longbow. Seventy five percent PDR. May, 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 maybe in solos, but I, I, it is basically the problem is like it's the plus eight all. On top of all the additional damage, right. on top of bard buffs, like in a barbarian running at you, scaling. running you un unexaggerated, un like with 210 HP, like baseline with 75 75. And like, I ran to G the other day, a couple of days ago, and I hit him in the back with two direct fireballs and an ice bolt. And I got him, and I'm geared by the way, and I got him down to like, 80%. And I'm <laughs> like, oh, okay, well. <laughs> and then he two tapped you, right? <laughs> no, well, they yeah, have their party right away. But like it was, I'm like, oh, I was, I was up re -outering. I was like, hmm, I had some, I had magic pen too. I had some magic pen. I had like 50% magic pen. So I, I just, I'm like, what do I do here? I mean, why didn't I, you have plus 12 or 13 true and you close enough to magic missile him? I, I would have been dead. Melted. But no, yeah. you, you, you would think that, but. You don't want to get into magic missile range of a barbarian yeah. with that much. Stats. That, that's a gamble. That's like, maybe I kill you or you kill me and probably not going to kill you. So I'm dead. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like putting myself in that position ever. I also wasn't using Magic Missile because that spells lame. But yeah, right, so overall, can... overall wipe feeling, everybody? Wipe, wipe is good. Oh, I'm, having, I'm having a great time. I'm I feel like we're, we're, we're griping gonna... and stuff and yeah. talking about negatives, but I'm having a great time. I had a really and, fun start of wipe. And like the like the quests coming out on a weekly basis. Quests are great. Like, like, good, really good. Good drip. Big w. Absolutely Turn, yep. Turning on the faucet for the econ like three weeks in. I, I, think I haven't been doing them. I don't know, but I'm sure it's fun. I still, <laughs> still wish... That they would make the quests account wide, with yeah. the exception of the squire quests, and I think they could do something else with that. But I love. We didn't even talk oh. about the squire. The squire is the best shit they've ever done in this game. No Fucking kidding, man. amazing. Knock it. So there was a home run. They knocked it out of the park with the squire, and the fact that you can do quests to get it to the point where you can get up to common gear, and everybody and their mother can get into full normals bis without spending a, a penny. It, yep. That's fucking fantastic. All right, so so bear Amazing. with me. I haven't even fucked with the squire. What does it do? Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I just Dude, I, the just, I just put the normals for like the first time. I, I, I just I'd hit the play button and I go die. I so know. it allows you to customize your loadout at the very beginning. So as a level one character, you can go in and you can customize the squire based on the items that are available to you from the other merchants. And as you increase your affinity with those merchants through quests you'll get access to more of the inventory that they have all the way up from junk, which is where you start all the way up to like Odin said common items. And you have a massive selection and it's a 
one button click. So it's fully customizable where you can say, all right, as a cleric, I want to have this champion armor. I want to have loose trousers, rawhide gloves, a kettle hat. I want to have a morning star instead of a mace. And I want to have a staff instead of a book. I want to have one health potion, one bandage, one protection potion, and two torches. And I want them in these exact locations. Once you set that, then all you do to get your next loadout is go in and click one button and boom, you have all of it. And or it also die, allows it you... auto equips you. Yes, yes, it auto equips. And if you're going, if you've come from high roller and you're trying to go down to normals, it allows you to one button unequip all your high end non normal qualifying gear. So anything that's I magical. I don't use that as much. I don't use it either. People won't because yeah. of how much of a mess it makes in your stash. Exactly. I want to put yep. my stuff where, yeah, I don't want them to <laughs> randomly put it in my stash. But, but it's but nice that it's there. Sure, if you've got the room for it. So, yeah, I'm with these guys. It is one of the best changes because I've probably played half HR and half normals. I'm probably like right down the middle, 50 50. And man, it makes playing normal so much better. And the, the other key thing that Odin mentioned is that it's free, mm-hmm. that you're not paying for mm-hmm. any of these items. That's and it's everything huge. That, that sounds great. Access to. So, so, so basically what you're saying is like these fucking scalpers in the marketplace aren't going to like rob me for white raw hide gloves white anymore. anymore. Nope. Right. Dude, I was last week, I was paying like <laughs> 150 gold per white. I don't common. know if you'll be able to <laughs> you can play normals. I don't Ridiculous. know if you'll be able to craft with the supplied gear. You might have to take it in one raid and then run it to turn it handled, and then you can craft with it. No, that sounds amazing. I actually got to do that. I've been slacking yeah, on that stuff. I, I just started normals. It's really, really useful, um, especially if you come out of a normal and you sell every single thing you get, right? Like, you maybe move your plus all to stash, and, like, any greens or blues you're wearing, vendor. Gone. Then yep. you equip equip squire gear, and I'm, I'm back in the match. Like, it's so mm-hmm. fast. Yep. Yeah, because it's always frustrating because like you would do a normal game and you'd be like, I don't feel like picking up this gear because I don't want it because I'm about to take it off at the end of this match. So yeah, right. like, you would just not pick it up. But now yep. you can like take it, put your upgrades on, play the match with your upgrade, and then at the end of the game, just reset with the squire. That's actually I didn't even think of that. That's, that's actually kind of oh, massive. It's, it's super huge. Free. It's so good. I did it with Katie yesterday for like six hours, and like the XP and the gold, it just generates like it's actually free. Yep. Uh. Yeah. So. There's one other thing I wanted to mention for this wipe, and now I'm kind of, I've drawn a blank here. Maybe if it comes back to me. I wanted to talk about, Soma and I were kind of just having a little chat here. Now, we just got done talking about how good this wipe is and how we're having fun with it. And there are still problems with the gear. And I want to get your opinion. Oh, what I wanted to talk about was the improvements to normals to make them so fun is really great. The only problem I see with it is that now it's, become less of it so the the normals were supposed to be like a timmy safe space where you were generally playing against more casual players but i think more and more players are getting in there and like kind of sweating in normals uh it's not a real problem but i could see this end up being an issue as a new player you're like go to normals learn the game and it's just like nope here here comes sbs and katie and they just rolled this guy over and went so, and did their own thing so i i kind of like I, I kind of disagree a little bit because I've always been, at least my opinion is that I don't think people get mad when they die yeah. normals to veteran yeah. players because like they it's could have won. Like it's, 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 right. it's very frustrating to die because you got stat checked. Like you say you get jumped by a, a juice buff ball team and you think you outplay them. You you hit them more than they hit you. You thought you played well and then you die and then you look at their HPs and that's, they're all at 80% still like yeah. that sucks. But mm-hmm. like, if you die normals, even to veteran players, like usually it is skill diff, and I don't think yep. that is as that doesn't feel as bad. Yeah, you're just like, oh man, I lost true. that fight fair and square. I'm gonna I'm gonna take some notes. You, you have to th- when you when you lose fairly, you you could see what you did wrong, and that's how you improve. But when you like die just from being stat checked, it's very hard to look at that footage or like look at that replay and be like, where did I make a mistake here? What could I have done better? And I I think normals is like a good space. For people yep. to learn, even if you are against veteran players, I think because I play a lot of veteran, I play a lot of normal queue, and like I definitely have killed my fair share of, of newer players, and they come and stream afterwards, and they are very rarely like upset though. They're usually very like good mm-hmm. fight. We almost had it. That was a sick fight because most of the time in normals the fights are good, even when you yeah. win against him. It's like the fights are usually long. I think and... there's a few things that they might need to tweak the sliders on. Like uh, I was I was playing with Zap and uh, his buddy, and we we're I was running um, ignites. 
bonk smite cleric and they're literally just one tapping everybody it was <laughs> kind of stupid there, there's a few dials that they might need to tweak in normals because some things are a little broken for the sake of balancing them in higher gear but i i see the point and i completely agree with you that it's all skill for the most part aside from a few broken things it's like when you lose you lost because the other player was better and it, it rarely does feel bad to lose because the other player was better so i i i I agree with you. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And you're never actually losing anything unless you go in with like sterling weapons. You yeah, that's lose, like the cost of meds. And so yeah, like, when, oh. when, you, when you need to lose, it's like, yeah, you're just not mad. Like, oh, fuck, I almost had him. Oh, well. Plus hit the, play, hit the play button again, but you have a squire. Mm -hmm. Right. And plus now, with how much loot you get in normals, it's like when you do right. get out, these, these, these new players, they don't know how good they have it now. They got their free squire kits. They get 500 <laughs> gold and shit when they get out of the dungeon. We used to fight over gray scraps, and we had to wear our shit gear. We walked up <laughs> both hills, both ways uphill. Yep. In the winter. It's, yep. it's a great time for new players and, norm mm -hmm. and, and normal enjoyers. I think they've done a really good job with that aspect of the game. Plus, yeah, the risk reward good. is very good. The risk yeah. is like, yeah, it's great. It feels really good to kill them and be like, oh, shit, he had a plus two all necklace. Or like, wow, plus two all loose trousers. Like, what the hell? That's like a thousand gold. Like that, that does feel nice. The pipeline yeah. into HR is great. But mm -hmm. This goes into a conversation. Now, we we just got done saying all the praises, so this may not be as received as well. But I was talking with Soma about this, and we've mentioned things about like think games like Destiny in the past, particularly with game modes like Gambit, which I still think this game could benefit from. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, but I was we were tossing around an idea. One part kind of changing the way stats on gear work entirely and one part changing the game modes. What if who here has played Destiny? Nope. Okay. I played so a little bit. Everybody except for Ken. And, and, and I'm sure people in chat have played it. Um if you've played Destiny for any length of time, you're probably familiar with Was that like, like a board game or something or <laughs> Space Magic Shooty Pew Pew. Yeah, yeah, I know it is. Um it, you're probably familiar with the Crucible. And if you're familiar with the Crucible you're probably familiar with Iron Banner. And you might know where I'm going with this just from me saying that. But what if we allow you to wear whatever gear you want in both queues, normals and high roller? In normals, the gear you're wearing does not impact player versus player at all. It doesn't change your damage. It doesn't change how much damage you take. The only things that you can change are your movement speed and maybe how much health you have. But that, that's a, another discussion for the gear balance part let people build their kits up in normal and play with them, gain their power against PVE, and then take it to high roller where power level is enabled. So if somebody is in an insane kit in HR and they are just juiced to the teeth, you went into high roller, they can fuck you over with that gear. But if they faced you in normals, for some reason they risk their kit in normals, they don't gain any benefit over you except for maybe some minor stats. Yeah, but why, we... why, why would people do that though? Yeah. Well, you could. It just gives you some sort of progression, and you get the choice. So this goes into the other part of where I was going to bring this with the stats. Is stats inherently, in my opinion, they can be fun to build around. And when you really hone in on a certain build that you're trying to make work, and you get it feeling really good, it does. It it feels good that you built the you built the gear up to that point. But what if instead of having things like plus two strength, plus five move speed. You got a pair of gloves that have plus two charges of zap, and zap highlights the target when they hit the target. You get a chess piece on fighter that gives you some healing over time whenever you kill a mob. Things that give you utility or increase the power of your character against PvE, but do nothing in PvP. They don't give you any increases to health, they just increase your defense against PvE. So every time you face other players, it's completely in a vacuum of what the balance is that your purple falchion does the same damage as a gray falchion. How would we feel if we start making gear more about giving your character interesting stats? Like, all of a sudden, your cleric can do holy damage to demons because you've got the old demon slayer pants. Stuff like that. Just a real general idea here. Well, I like the idea of, like, more unique styles of, of gear and weapons up on, like, a lower end, not, like, Cinder and, like, these top-end uniques, but unique effects on lower rarity gear that affect PvE specifically. Like, I think the Sterling weapons are like the first raw iteration of that where you just have more damage against undead. But I feel like you could do, you can get even more deep with that and make like demon clad legs 
make you take less damage against demons on top of it, or like just like small things like that. I think I, I think that, that's where you go. Like poison resistance, where you can get like you know, some stats on your gear, where if you get hit by the dragonfly shit, or you can just walk through zombie clouds and take no damage, stuff like that. I feel it could be extremely interesting, and it helps you feel like you're making progression for the PVE aspect, but it always keeps PVP fair. I think there's a group of people, or there's there's a non insignificant amount of the player base who likes their being some kind of power struggle between gear because it makes taking your opponent's gear more exciting. And it feels good when you beat a team that's more gear than you. But I'm I'm just curious what people would think about the game where there is no power differential between players and it only affects PVE. Walk through the centipede piss. Yes. Oh my <laughs> god. Poison <laughs> resistance. Get through the stupid centipede shit. God damn it. I hate that. It's not bad, yeah, sure. Um, I think it's good to have um, some sort of effect similar to artifacts on a, on a way lesser scale, especially for like mm. crafted epics where it doesn't fundamentally change PvP, but it, it's cool and interesting. Or like once in a while it can change it. Like me and Katie were talking about yesterday, some sort of epic kite shield that's like a baby Aegis where like once every 30 seconds you can reflect one spell. And so like if things had some sort of effect, because Dungeons and Dragons is kind of like that where like you get enchanted little pieces as drops. You're like, oh, that's neat. Like I can you know, summon a light orb from my gloves once. And so it's just another button you can push. Mm -hmm. But the idea of equalized PvP, for me anyway, especially in a game like this and, and most full loop PvP games, I, I don't really care for. Because <clears throat> then it makes winning and losing kind of um, irrelevant. And that's a big part of the game's dopamine hits is like losing big gear or like winning with big gear or whatever. So you have equalized, you have normals. Like normals is like very close to equalized PvP. True. Like yes, there right. is a lot of variance in normals, but like it is close enough. And in my opinion, I don't think you have to get any deeper than that. I think I think normals are great. Mm -hmm. I, I've had, like I said, people don't play enough normals. I wish like, there was more of an incentive to play normals. I mean, there is in a way, but people don't know it. So like, there aren't enough, a lot of people playing it. And I, I wish there was more focus on normal gameplay because it really is some of the most fun you can have in this game. It's so it's fun. full, man. Honestly, I, it doesn't sound like you've been in there that much or you're not using Squire, but <clears throat> normals is like insecure and uh, there's yeah, a lot of game. people in there. Yep. And I do agree it's sweatier there, but it, it really doesn't feel bad when you lose. You're like, oh, well, we shouldn't have pulled the champion in the whole room. Or like, the, the fact wow, that it's sweaty is, is, next to me. is great, I think. I mean, it's yeah. it's so much fun. Plus, I, I think Arena is going to be a huge part of that equalize since now they said that it's going to be non-full loot was the idea at that's the end. What I, that's kind of where I was taking this. I'm like, if they're not going to do it in PvE, because part of me, I could see a game mode where they really like crank the the raid difficulty up. I've suggested in the past. I think it would be cool if they added a nightmare difficulty above high roller. Give us normal, give us hard, and then go nightmare. Make like fucking every mob in nightmare mode a nightmare version of that mob. It's like terrifying to even walk through your own module. There would be almost no PvP of that because trying to rush other people's spawns with five black skeletons chasing you, you're just somebody gets stuck on something, they die. If they were to like really crank up the gear and let you get super powerful against PVE, I could see a lot of people being drawn to the PVE progression part of that. But I tend to agree that I think you're right that it's just it takes away the fun if you normalize the PvP. It takes away the fun of fighting players and like taking their gear and getting that dopamine hit of winning mm -hmm. when you're over when they're they're overgeared. So yeah, there has to be a gap, uh, but it, it can't be too large and it can't be too small. Um... That recent game that we just played that was like a space shooter game was kind of similar Marauders? to our game. Marauders? No. Or... Uh, uh, Star, Star Siege? Siege. <clears throat> yeah, Star Siege. So Star Siege, it's hard to say that, but went through phases, but its, it's final iteration was like, you basically, there was no reason to loot anybody anymore. Like everybody had equalized armor for the most part and equalized weapons. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, like, why even have PVE? And like, like I don't know, everyone just quit because it, it felt, dying felt like nothing. And like, you didn't even want to loot somebody if you killed them. And so there does, there needs to be some power gap. And this is a struggle that you guys have talked about even tonight with like the plus three all, plus two all, like nerfing and raising classes. And when multi-classing comes out, that's going to be a big part of this is like the RNG. But there has to be some form of that because the dopamine is like the biggest draw to full loot PvP. It's like getting the yeah, loot. Yeah, there has to be stakes. The Chinese. Yeah, there's got to be some stakes. And so. Oh, yeah. You don't got to sell me on full loot. I love full yeah. loot. Even I... if you like die now and you're like, oh, you had plus two all and plus 15 damage. Like that bitch. At the same time, you're like, ooh, <laughs> like if I, if I got him, though. If I got him, though. That's like 10K. Uh, the, I'm playing into the what if we push the PvE, PvE part of Dark and Darker Harder where the content becomes evolved enough where it, it like really feels fleshed out. 
because it feels good right now to do bosses and stuff, but it is pretty simple and there's not a lot of maps and stuff. But what if we're what if you have like a you know a big raid that your team has to be geared for? You need these like fire resistance and shit, like old WoW gear. Yeah, you gotta get your your Nixia cloak so you can right. go. Yeah. <laughs> you, like sure, killing another player doesn't make you excited to take their gear in terms of the power it will give you against another player, but it could make you excited, like, dude, this guy had the shield, you need to go kill that boss. We can go to the other side of the, the map and go kill that boss now. The fucking dragon shield from RuneScape is on this guy. We can go kill the dragons now. That that's where I'm kind of leaning with this is the less there is on a power differential, because th no matter what, it does feel bad to lose in a power differential, even if it's a small one. But I do agree that the smaller that you make the power differential, the more or the the less punishing it feels and the more exciting it does feel to take that loot and just be like, well, I got 5% stronger, but that's 5%. That might help me win the next fight. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm kind of on, I'm on both sides here. I, I, I like both. Well, it's also if we um like part of the loop is the QOL that they've been doing, like when we mentioned Squire Marketplace quests, like mm. uh, but kind of turned on faucet. And so if you only add a few more things that they've already mentioned, then it's gonna feel so it's not even really gonna hurt to die if we have insurance. And then right now your squire, mm. like you guys mentioned, you don't want to say put all my stuff in stash because he just throws that shit in there and you're like, great. And so everyone has no. like make little, you know, like you make like boots, pants, chest, weapon, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You make like a oh, an yeah. outfit for yourself. So it'd be very simple if Squire had like five preset loadouts and you just say like, move all my HR gear to preset one, or you can just move it there yourself. And so when you're ready to go back to HR, you just put Squire uh, equip mannequin three and he puts on like everything. Like there's even a backpack yeah. there. Like you have all your gear and you That's have when potion, we get killed hall. and then you drop in. Yeah. Or another my good room. part with what you're mentioning with PVE is when we get guild hall or guilds, you just have light passive progression. That's like not a big deal. Like your guild leader can choose. You do more damage to demons or dragons this week by like 5%. You know, there's like little perk choices mm -hmm. and like everyone's XP goes into it. So I feel like we're so close. Like they're on such a good track right now. And each, you know, this wipe plus next wipe. Like I can only imagine like how much that they plan on doing this wipe with like the classes. You sort of just gave me an epiphany on the gear yeah. insurance. Because I think everybody was skeptical of it. And it's like, well, if you have gear insurance, what's the point of the gear anyway? Everybody just gets to keep their gear. If if you're in like a good good kit, but it's not a great kit and it's not worth like 30k, you're still kind of you're still upset when you lose it. But if a team kills you that and their kit's worth 500 k and they stop to look at your kit and they're like, this guy's shit, and then they just leave, mm -hmm. and you get that whole kit back, that's actually great. That's fucking mm -hmm. fantastic. That is like a way to fix getting steamrolled by another team it still sucks still wasted your time and it's so we talked hurts. about this before the problem with that is is like then then decent gear is just infinitely in rotation like you're not really risking anything to gain everything i guess and like, and like i said and you could have but an insurance no, if... you could you could have it you could have it right but if you are going to have it then you need to have durability so gear just isn't in the same gear isn't in rotation Maybe forever, it can only, be, re for only months. be recovered a certain amount of times. Sure, something like that. That that works too. Just like so, you can't just have a hey like a sleeper well, kit. It kind of mid. It gets increasingly expensive to insure that piece every time you lose it. Something like that, and like, so I don't think it turns it back because like it is in a sense a gold sink. But I think having a system in place that makes like gear stay in rotation forever is good at the beginning of a wipe. But at the later you get into the wipe, that like causes an issue where. Everything gets super expensive because there's uh, so much gear in rotation. Yeah, that, that like I well, don't we, know, just, we we it's... talked about this before that this wipe even happened, which is that there should be a limit to what tier of gear can be insured, so that that really we don't end up having the same problem we had last uh, wipe, where the gold gear never leaves circulation because it's so good that people will extract with it at all costs. Um, so we don't want that, but at the same time, I feel like if you're in a like mid to decent kit and you get rolled by a high end team, they're not going to loot your shit. But if you fight another team and you lose your kit, they're going to take your stuff. If if they're like close to your gear level, cause they want another set of stuff or they're going to sell it that cause it matters to them. So I feel like the insurance impact isn't going to be with that in mind. I feel like it, it might not have that problem. It, it, it's it's good. Cause much. it helps like newer players, like the people that, the, the the nails right i always say the hammer and nails are yeah. players that are hammers and they're player that are nails it like helps the nail players in a sense that they die they get their stuff back because they're not probably need looted and i think that that uh, insurance system could work if it's like a one time per piece of gear like this gear this piece of gear has been insured once it can't be insured again like you got it back already you've mm -hmm. already gotten your return on investment you've, you've already got your 
your one time backsies. I think that that would be fine. Yeah. I think yeah, for me, the, the way I think about the insurance, because I, I feel like the vast majority of the time, if it's an item that's worth insuring for me, the chances that someone's going to leave it on my body after I'm dead are slim to none. But what it does allow me to do, if I go down to Inferno and, well, HR Inferno, and we're going to f- maybe try to fight the Warlord for the first time because we'd never beat him in HR before. Normally, if I'm wearing my really, really good gear, it's like, eh, you know what? It took me a while to get this chess piece. I'm risk not going to risk it. it. I'm not right, going to risk yeah. the Warlord fight. But if I have insurance, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Sure. We die. That's... Chances that someone's going to pick up that gear. Yeah, there's a chance, but maybe I go scout the rest <laughs> of Inferno the first. <laughs> right. Right. It's not happening in so, <laughs> so I like it from that perspective. I, I, I don't see... A ton of downside but i, I, like I do that agree idea. that so so here's like a it was a problem that i think of right away is like okay scenario right i'm in with my team like we're all geared there's another good team and we fight and like say for instance like say uh yeah, me and my, uh, my, my my two teammates die we're getting rolled i get away and like i'm in swarm i can't get to a blue i'm fucks phil and like normally i would have to to save my gear i'd have to i would have to risk going back to circle getting to a portal and getting out. But now since my gear is insured, I can run to the corner of the map and just die in the corner and my gear will be back tomorrow. Like that, that's the first thing I think of that that could be problematic is that, okay, whenever somebody is in Mm. danger, if they just want to save their shit, they could just be a rat, run to the corner of the map and swarm, be a so bad strange and just suck and hide until the game's over. Yeah, I think if you, inc- true. you ramp the price on insurance on those pieces so that it becomes prohibitively expensive to keep doing that with a kit, you would stop people from being able to do it at some point. And I think most players probably wouldn't be able to afford it beyond like one or two instances. Yeah, but insurance. yeah, but if you like the top end of players like and you have like crazy gear and you would or if you're insuring it to begin with, it's worth more than what you're insuring it, right? Or I if you wouldn't top, be insuring it. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. I, I think without a nightmare mode in this game where players like that can actually die and straight up lose their gear on a consistent basis, I think the high end is is where the biggest problems are and that we need to like deal with people already having like millions of gold worth of shit between their accounts and their or their team has like a million gold worth of assets at this point in the wipe. It's like it gets so out of control where some people just play the game so much and they just amass such an insane amount of wealth that they could just afford to be ignorant with gear for the entire wipe after well, playing for a couple of weeks. We could already do that though in, in Dark and Darker. Like okay. even without insurance, that's already a thing. Like I played with Rush Frog today. He already has four gold coin chests. He's already worth three hundred and forty. That, that's what I'm saying, is like gold. that's that's something that I think needs to be addressed. I don't know how to address it personally, but I feel like there is a certain point where like the players just get too rich. You just have too much money. I think and Ken's grinning like over here because he's part of the like problem. <laughs> though. Like this problem doesn't that only extends to like the top one percent. Like the other ninety nine percent need the insurance. So when they get off work tomorrow and they come home, they have like partial a bunch of partial sets are back. No, I'm and for so, insurance. Yeah, I'm, like, insurance. I'm for insurance too. But I'm saying like that is a problem. I think that's that's a problem with definitely the definitely end. needs a solution. Not even the high end. If if you even if you're like not even at the high end, if you just like your team partially lost a fight and like you're a lone survivor or two of your lone survivor and you're like being gay kept and instead of having to fight your way into the zone and get a portal like everybody else has to you choose to take the coward's way out so to speak right and Dying dungeon right and get and get your gear back I that mean, that seems that seems bad right i hear what you're saying but like is that really nice like if someone gets away and you don't get one player's gear like it is what it is. Also, I mean, but but but, but it's, it's not it's not about the people below, getting right? their gear. It's just the fact that you get rewarded for not playing well, the game. You didn't get rewarded because yeah, you're like losing you the entire time you're that not. you invested into the run. Mm-hmm. You're not leaving with any loot, and all that insurance money that you just paid is what's covering so, the gear. So so think, think of the players. Game. So think of the players that like you're fighting, right? And you're you're beating him. You're going to kill him eventually. And what is he doing? He's just standing there, dropping all of his jewelry in grass. Oh, pseudo griefing you you don't get it back yeah yeah but but think of that like, that that to me is like this this is the same thing is like okay yes I, i've beaten you but now you're using quote-unquote grief mechanics i would call it to mm-hmm. unfairly hide your gear and like get it back mm-hmm. and basically cheat the system 
I think I think that there's probably ways to to fix that. Like just make it so you don't get a hundred percent of your gear back. So like it's worth it'd be worth it for you to risk trying to find a portal and getting out instead yeah. of just dying to swarm. I think that's kind of what they planned on doing, right? They, yeah, they, like they made that. it sound like you could not insure your whole kit. You were losing something no matter what. Right. Yeah, I mean, they already said they, they don't like the idea of safe slots at all, and we'll never have like a Tarkov style alpha case or whatever. So they, they want there to be some difficulty. But I agree with you yeah. as well, Arcade. Yeah, I, I think it's so cool with the Arc the uh, insurance aspect, not only for HR bossing, but especially when we get to like Dragon. If you've secured the zone, you're like, all right, let's try Especially Dragon. with this you know, tentative like, duo alliance is. that they're talking about. Yeah, and like artifacts. Like, let's go. I hope that when you go to fight dragon you cannot escape that map unless the dragon dies you're locked in there like the minute you load in it's that's just a, actually that's like he's sitting there savage. and like there's there's like a gate behind him and the only way you can get out is if he dies and then the gate opens and so like it's, it's you or him didn't dungeon board do that when it was still project crawl when you went down to like that little tiny circle room that they had that was their hell you couldn't get out unless you killed the troll or whatever boss was down there probably sounds, like, sounds like something they did it was so small of a circle. Like if you, it was you know, tiny. You're pretty much dead if you didn't kill that. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, that that's actually a pretty cool idea. Or maybe like you have that. to like send your rogue over, and he's got to like pull the gate, and it only opens for like five seconds. He's like, okay, everyone, go now, go now, and like you try to run out. <laughs> Time to magic lock the gate. Yeah, dragons like free. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> I dragons forget who I, people. I, I forget who I was talking to or who I heard it from. It's just it's like on the. It's like back of my mind is like, somebody was talking about how the game should have more like puzzles and like interactive PVE things that you have to deal with. Like you have to go, like one of your teammates has to go pull a lever over there on the other side of the maze to open up part of the door so you can get through or they, and they have to wait till you're through. And it, we have that kind of with the maze where you like step on. Yeah. A pressure plate yeah. I agree. Walks through. It's kind of, I was like playing with Jay earlier today and like, I don't know the maze very well, but Jay was like getting run down by a three man. He just like goes I, into I the maze that. That. and just like runs to the labyrinth, hits a fucking lever that I couldn't even see, hits a pressure plate, goes through a fucking wooden barricade. I'm like, I would have been dead that minutes is ago. So <laughs> fucking cool. And we need <laughs> more cool. stuff like that. Like even PVE encounters that require, like imagine if instead of the boss mechanics, just being like warlord kills you instantly if he hits you and he has, minions with five billion health it was like you have to go two of your players have to go stand in the circle so that it makes the skeletons vulnerable but they can't fight back so one person's fighting but he has to dodge like projectiles while he's fighting something yeah, like something more mechanic. engaging yeah i'm sure it's coming i mean why not right we, we're already Traps. getting more we're getting more puzzles and like yesterday puzzles, I, yeah. I felt like it was novel and ice caves like I, I went to pick up a cup and just used it, and then uh, opened yeah. like a door somewhere yes. else. And yeah, I went yeah. found like a alliance that I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Like that's neat as hell." It's Never cool, but it it'd be better if it was like random. They, they, they could definitely add some more of that, I think, because yeah. I, I, it definitely yeah. fits into this game. That's like a huge novelty yeah. of the game is like the crazy or dungeon, dungeon and dragons riddles and puddles, yeah, and, like trap doors and stuff like that is is cool. Has anybody been magically locked away yet while geared? It still no. hasn't happened to me. Nah, I got to I got to use it today in PvP. That was kind of cool. It's not bad, actually. I, I think it's like worth taking a ten spell, and then again, that goes back to the argument of wizard of like not using spell overloads, like going ten spell. You you give up power for versatility. I was able to do a cool utilitarian thing of blocking a team from pushing us on one angle while we fought another team from a different angle. I was like, this is sick. I would never be able to do this with yep. spell overload. So hey, the spell is cool. Uh, Magic lock yeah. feels great in Inferno, man. It was really good in Inferno. Uh, probably a little too strong in Inferno. They definitely got to make some of those doors <laughs> destructible somehow. <laughs> maybe with like like high impact weapons like the sledgehammer and stuff yeah. or... now, crumbles them this, this mm -hmm. was a this was a suggestion i made back when in september before they did the stat rework i made a suggestion to split strength into like strength and endurance and they ended up you know giving us the stat we have now but one thing i wanted to see strength be able to do make it so that any two-handed weapon in the game could break down doors but it was dependent on your strength how long it took and barbs would still be the best at it with crush They'd always one tap it. How would you guys feel if you could, if every class could break down doors that could use a two hander, even rogue with a pickaxe? It would probably take them like eight hits, but well, it's it, kind of like how it was in, it. Ru in ruins, but for like the wooden barricades, but like for mm -hmm. doors. Yeah, I mean maybe. I feel like it'd be okay in crypts because it's it's there's enough choke points and enough like. Well, uh, I kind of like where crypts to get away. Yeah. But I, th I think like for inferno, like the stone doors, I think you could do something like turn them into like almost like ice in. Helling or not Helling Crips, uh, the Forgotten. Is, What's it called? Yeah. I don't even know. Ice, ice caverns. caverns. Ice caverns. Sure, that one. Make it like ice where like it's pretty hard to break. It, it takes a while. I think it's kind of that'd be kind of cool. But I think oh, Crips yeah, is somebody, okay. 
Somebody in your chat said door HP pre-hit the doors. That's actually kind of smart. I could see that. You like mm. you like damage a door before you play. So if a team tries to run away and shut the door behind you, you've already damaged that door. You like cut off. I, I, I could I could like bring in my repair hammer and I can start repairing fucking doors. <laughs> Dude, we have, we go all down the down the rabbit hole with shit with like tra setting up traps and like putting spring traps on doors and stuff. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of cool shit we could do with that. I just want to see more like map and PVE complexity added to the game. Because I think one thing that does frustrate people is this happened in, I was playing with Zap. We were in, you know, the corner room where you spawn like right in a little cubby hole and right outside there's a skeleton. There's the bookcase that goes down to the Royal coffin skeleton champions in there. How could rush frogs mm -hmm. team spawned one room over from us yep, I while know I was, fun. while I was fighting the skelly champ, we were, it was less than 30 seconds into the match. I, an entire, I can't even hear them. Of course. They just jump down off the rafter and all three of their army kill me. I'm like in the middle of fighting Skeletor, I'm loud as fuck. I'm just die. I'm like, how the fuck did these guys get in here already? Yeah, that that's one is cursed. Whenever I like yeah, spawn near that, that, that's yeah. at the first place you run to because we you we learned. every team every team that spawns there, they're there for like at least a minute because they go Cause down they the bucket and they, they yeah. kill, well, one kills a champion, one goes to loot the library, the other guy's yeah. fucking dying and hits the hell shrine. So it, yeah, they, usually the team that spawns there is there for like a minute or two. So. Yeah, I almost always rush that spawn. It's almost it's free low, which sucks for yeah, that people that spawn there. Like but you you, you did mention like something about audio being fucked. I kind of want to talk about this. Has yeah, anybody so else we got, noticed? We went around the the creep thing. How, well, no, not even the creep thing, but like, but we'll talk about that too. But audio is just fucked, right? Am I not crazy? I feel like if I'm just turned like thirty degrees away from somebody yes. and they're like to my left and they cast a spell, they're like right behind me. They sound like they're uh, thirty meters away from me. Yeah, it's like. It's like some yep. Tarkov level fuckery with what they did to the audio. It's a little fucky, yeah. I don't know what they did, but it is uh, not good. But the creep thing and like the slow walking and the shift walking and you're getting no sound when you shift walk. How do you feel about that? I think it's kind of cool, but it might be problematic later. I'm digging I... it right now. I did not think I was going to like it, but it's a ton of fun. It's changed the game quite a bit, especially for solos. Like if you can get a, a trios team to all be coordinated enough to to walk or crouch walk, there's some real shenanigans you can get into. Yeah. But I, I don't it, see it for cool. yeah, for everyday for your average Joe player, especially in normals, most people aren't taking the time to walk. Every now and then they might creep. But for solos, it's a game changer. Walk? Have they changed walk at all? Is it the same noise? Level? Walk is the exact same mechanic. So it, okay. uh, as soon as you hold, like I think shift is the default bind mm -hmm. for walk, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you hit that, you'll see the icon, the creep icon pop up in 0.5 seconds, and then you can just walk silently wherever you go. So you don't have to crouch. CSGO walk, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's basically CSGO Valor. And like, it works for those games. It's, 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 it's a, it, I don't think it's a problem yet, but I could see it being like a problem in the future. Someone I've had some fun, I've had fun with it. to make it fucky and make everybody hate Like it. my I, team I, died. I will... Jay and yeah, whatever died, sorry. Jay and uh, my other teammate died, or Smoking died today. And I was running away from this buff ball team. I like turned a corner, hit in the dark, turned off the lights, and they just ran by me. And then I just like shift walk back down the staircase and just like walk <laughs> away. And I'm like, okay, this was kind of cool. Like, and it's if really they could hear me, shit. if they could hear me, I would be dead. So like, this was kind of cool. Right. So like, that's kind of sweet. But I think it could be a problem in the future with like stream snipers and people griefing lobbies, just like, following you around not making yeah. any noise and then just like griefing you like i said that's not like a problem for everybody you shouldn't bounce even around that but that's where my head my head always goes to like worst case scenario of people bug abusing it's not a bug but you know abusing game mechanics, right. mechanics. unfairly yeah 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 i mean i'm in a hot take and i'm gonna say i fucking hate it i hate the idea of it it hasn't really happened to me it's probably way, way worse than solos i agree mm -hmm. i think it could be way more toxic than solos so it's, i'm curious what you say especially if you're hitting treasure me, it's, it's just it's like the tarkov thing it's like if they're if they're creeping and we get 200 percent headshot multiplier like now i have to be not afraid isn't the right word like i like like when you lower the ttk and then you make things soundless you start to go into tarkov territory and so if you like those kind of games it's probably great but like it it becomes more of a shooter and more of an anxious thing where like now when i'm looting a corpse i have to like constantly stop looting the corpse and like look around or like i'm looting treasure pile and i have to like constantly rotate like cctv i'm like well i have no sound cues anymore like i don't like having to play like i'm deaf you know what i mean like the audio is such a big part of the game and it leads to like organic 1v1s and good fights and now it's like if I stop paying attention for like half a second, I just get like triple shot and I'm dead, or like I get headshot by like a windlass or something like that. There's gonna be a lot of people just creeping around. And so 
it's it brings it to like a hunt showdown where you don't want to make any noise and like a tarkov mm -hmm. where like you have to like maybe not go loot a corpse because someone's just like ready to shoot you with a windlass and so like the... i don't like the idea of it but nothing's really happened to me today like maybe no one's capitalizing on it but like you said there's cool elements right like you now you can creep around or like the solos can just like crawl around crypts and like avoid the big teams but like yeah i, mean, I, I have to agree in solos yeah. I, the more i think about it in solos it like fucking makes that miserable and once it's, people like start taking advantage of it it's yeah. gonna be like it's gonna be like tarkov like you know you've had those fights in tarkov mm -hmm. really you've had a crazy fight with another squad and then like the squad that's just been sitting still uh, 500 meters away just waiting for you to be done just like wins yep. because they've just been quiet just, just walking quiet. around getting in position just waiting it makes like the third partying way worse because at least when you get third party in threes or even in solos previously you've always had sound cues like okay i just got out of a fight i hear somebody at the other side of this door if they're coming to third party me at least you have like a small amount of time to mm -hmm. brace yourself whereas now if somebody just just crutch walks yeah. around you have no idea you might just be dead before anything yeah. you have any I mean, that's the, the solo thing is like i never liked rogues yeah. because they just like they fuck it all up for mm -hmm. solos and like now everyone's my thought is that if you make it a, a perk or just get rid of it, and so now it's a multi-class thing. So like everybody, if they want that bullshit, can multi-class in a rogue and take creep. But like why disable and solos for free. Yeah, like I don't know. I just for me it's just like that the anxiety factor of it and like the the sneakiness, the third party and stuff. Like it just I don't think it has room in, in solos personally. Like it, I will say in trios it was cool. Like one of their guys snuck for the flank. And then when I went to sneak for the flank, he was already at the corner. And I just never heard him get there. And so he just like smoked me. And I was like, okay, like I was about to do the same thing. It's so, like that part, it's cool tactically. But in solos, I just think like you just get, you're just dead. It's funny watching. Yeah, an yeah. Zap, zap in chat says in trios, you have a team to watch your back. Mm -hmm. So, but like in solos, you just don't. Like you're there to watch your back. And if you want to lose something, like you only have two eyes. So, like it, every time you want to lose something or do something, you're basically just putting yourself at risk to die to somebody who yeah. is making no sound. See, I'm so, on the yeah, opposite I end. I think that's great. I, I I think there should be a risk. If you're really bad at looting, if you're sitting there taking your sweet time looting a corpse, you should be at risk. And I don't, even though we're all used to it at this point, I think there is a legit argument to be made that you shouldn't be able to know everything that you need to know in the game simply from audio cues. You should have to have your head on a swivel. And I think this really encourages everybody to do that. I think so, that they yeah. could probably ha find a happy middle ground where creep doesn't make you completely silent all the way up until they're actually just inside you giving you a rectal exam. They could probably would, make I'd it be so game. that you can, you can, you'll hear them coming if they're close enough. Pro yeah, because proximity you based. Get, you should get a warning if they're close enough. Proximity like based be would be good. And it would be even cooler if they wanted to add more complexity to it to adapt it to shoe type, right? Like certain shoes might have yeah, the ability to work. walk yeah. more. Uh, it is, it is. But yeah, like already... a full plate fighter, I don't care how stealthy you are, a full plate fighter should not be able to walk around on ice quietly. Yeah, exactly. right. Just because he's wearing lace turn shoes. <laughs> <laughs> right, it just sneaks right up. I'm like, okay. But I think there is a place for like a stealthy play style where if you are wearing all cloth or all leather and you're like under a certain, well, just for... Just like a weight threshold, just for an example. Where, okay, you could be silent if you crouch or slow walk, but if you're in full plate, you're wearing a fine cure, you have a Templar's armor on, you have a fucking hound skull, you just, you can't. You just can't. It makes way more sense. Somebody in Sobaz chat said the easiest way to fix that is just put more shit on the ground that makes Yeah, I was going to say that too. So, like, Tarkov's yeah. great. It's like, like, yes, there's a lot of slow walking in Tarkov, but Tarkov also has, like, glass on the ground or, like, different mm -hmm. textures. Whereas if you, they, they even if they're crouch walking. They, yeah, there's they, 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 rebel and stuff like, but like yeah. they walk on wood. Oh, I heard wood. Even though they're crutch walking, I, I kind of know now. I've narrowed down where they are. Like, that's actually been that's actually a really cool concept in Tarkov, and that's something that maybe they can go for if they want to keep the slow walk creep system. Is add it would more still make stuff you on the ground. able to sneak up on people that are fighting or doing things like opening chests. You'd still be able to get really close. You'd have to route you. properly and like dodge certain yeah, things on the ground. You that, just yeah, be straight at them. I like that idea actually. I think that yeah, too. that's probably a good idea. Um. Speaking of the type of shoes, how we feel about the new gear? I absolutely love every piece oh, yeah. they've added. It's mm -hmm. so good. Yep. I Super love diverse. how many different pieces. And, and, and like some of it is just useless, and I'm cool with that. It just, dude, I, I want to yep. wear a salad. I don't care. I'm gonna wear this fucking salad. I'm gonna look. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on my bowl cap, it's and for, I'm gonna go in. It's well, the salad's terrible because it has no stats, and we've already learned how that works. Well, that's very strange. Big. Is this? Oh, it's the, which one is the one that has no stats? Is it the open salad? Open Maybe salad? it's just salads. I'm mixing up. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, there's, there's two. One of the salads has it's. I, think, I don't know if it's salad or salad. One of them has no stats. So it's just garbage. Um, it's cool that like Ranger can wear heavy gambeson and Spangenhelm now, and they have like plate options. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, the heavy gambeson is the fucking coolest looking piece of armor in the entire game. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Not the one um, with spikes. Well, 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 that's, one, well, that's on Warlocks well, that's, to wear, that's right? The, that's the champion armor. The heavy mm, gambeson is the sick. like the tight like leather that has the the metal pauldrons and like yeah, it's like them. the old gambeson but with like shoulder pads. It's really yeah. cool. And it's got way better colors. It's fucking sick. Um, yeah, I, the I love all the gear that they've added, and it's pretty obvious that some of these gear types were built with multi-classing in mind. And I think to go back to what we've been talking about a lot with the changes on this patch, it does feel like a lot of what they've done is multi-classing in mind. Nerf the holy strike, nerf overload, and stuff because it might be next week that we get multi-classing. It and might can be. You imagine one fifty range holy strike with spell overload. On, and a wizard cleric running at you, you're just like praying to God that the game crashes so you don't have to fight him. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, this creep change feels like it might have been designed for what happens when every player can can spec into creep. Yeah, it could be data gathering as well. Yep. We're we're ba- we're basically on the test server. Yes. I hope you didn't buy the test uh, the the hold the line edition for. Well, so since we're like dabbling in multiclassing, do we do want to like talk about multiclassing and things yes. that we're excited for? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Let's get into it. You go first. Well, I, we're, I, I mean, we're to start. Well, let's, let's, let's go around the rooms to see, like, what are some like theoretical builds that you would want to do when multi-classing does come out? Let's let's not start with me. Let's start with somebody else because I'm still not sure. What about you, Odin? What do you think? Well, the obvious one for me is Paladin, just because I love Paladin. Uh, I want to do some some mix of fighter cleric. But uh, I think that there's one that could end up being very broken, which is a mixture of Ranger Cleric. And uh, wiz- and um, wizard just like stacking as much magical damage and smite on a survival bow as pal- as possible with add magic and uh-huh. just hitting people for seventy damage with a survival bow in the in the body that could be very problematic while being tanky and still being able to move at a decent clip. But uh, I the one that I just thought about today was like making the absolute most sustainable class in the game, which would be warlock, cleric, fighter, and you just yeah, this is every- what I wanted to do every piece of sustain that you can from all three of these classes just become an unkillable juggernaut. Yeah, I have wanted I want to do the with the warlock cleric thing. This is what I was saying. I think I think it's going to be the most broken thing in the game is if you just take warlock plus cleric, you play curse lock and then you take uh advanced healing, uh overhealing, vampirism and torture mastery as like your four perks and then you just play curse lock stacking magic healing gear. You can get 30 magic healing with overheal with torture mastery and I just don't see how you die with plus eight all. The way they change the gear. scaling, I don't think it will scale that well if you get up to that high. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's fine because you have vampirism. It, it's you have so <laughs> much that even though so the scaling is low, you're going to be unkillable. And with overhealing, you're going to have like 200 effective HP at all times, dealing tons of damage. The overhealing part is the crazy part about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then mix in fighters so you can wear plate and have a heater shield. Well, you can have a heater shield. Yeah. Yeah. With world. You don't even need to fight it, but like, yeah, I hear that the fighter part does sound kind of cool too. But you don't even need to, you, you can just wear like that's a you're, we're talking literal death knight here, dude. This is yeah. the, the unkillable <laughs> plate juggernaut, the, 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 the Exodia build. Just like, yeah, it's what I'm built. Like, literally, why I'm playing Warlock today is because like I, I gotta level my class, so I'm like multi classing because the nerf wizard, and I'm gonna show them how OP everything else is because I don't know, whenever they nerf wizard, I play Warlock. But yeah, All what right. about you? What about you, Arcane? What kind of multi classing build are you looking forward to? So I started leveling my wizard first because my plan was to do a wizard cleric hybrid. I feel like those two learn from each other. The way I approached it, and I really nerded out on this. I think I shared it with Odin. I had built a spreadsheet that does yeah, the well, randomization. I was, I was working from home so, and he calls me. Fucking dork. Yeah, he, he's like, dude, look yeah. at this. And he's got this whole spreadsheet with all the perks and stuff on it. And I'm like, yep. you might it be, randomly you might be rolls. a little ahead of yourself here, but goddamn. So, <laughs> I've theory crafted this out, just done. I've done like eight or nine sample learning token expenditures, right? Every time I did it between cleric and wizard, I always got something that was useful. Like when I, when I did things with other classes, it was like, oh, well, if I got this, I, I don't even know what I would do next other than maybe reroll my freaking character. This combination seems really good. Plus, I the first D&D character I ever had in second edition was a fighter cleric magic user. And 
this gets me two thirds of the way there. So I don't know if I'm going to end up doing a fighter third because I'm with you guys. Paladin is kind of second on my list. But as of right now, I feel like if my cleric can get intense focus, I'm just going to be through the moon excited, right? If I get any spell, if yeah, so there's no ability, no skill that a wizard has that I wouldn't really want. I mean, the shield, I guess, is not ideal, but it is still kind of useful. The shield doesn't sound bad, Dude, actually. the shield would be great on Claire. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. Right, but you, you're you still giving up. But you're giving up forget, smite, or you're giving up PDR for that, the, your other skill. The shield scale? I, I forget. Does it scale? It, it scales, not, not the shield doesn't scale, but the damage from the burst from the shield scales. Yes. Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that would not be bad. So that that's, that's my point. Like, right cleric with meditate, good. Cleric with intense focus, great. Cleric with the shield, still not bad. Then any of the spells that a wizard has, pretty much all of them I would love to have on a cleric because it would just be a blast to play. Ten spell cleric with a couple wizard spells thrown in just seems like an absolute blast to play. And then on cleric the reverse with meditate sounds crazy. Sorry to interrupt you. I didn't even think about no, that. No, you're good. Yeah. Like it's like heal your team and then just take a quick rest and you also heal it. That sounds crazy good. Yeah. Sorry, continue. Mm, no, you're good. True. But then uh yeah, on the flip side. If the wizard, if I got smite on my wizard, like staff mastery is one of the best additions to the wizard class in a long time. It feels great to be able to actually kill mobs without having to burn through your spells. It's really, really nice, especially for normals. If you're just grinding your levels, getting through quests, feels really, really good. But yeah, wizard with earthquake sounds incredible. Like earthquake on intense focus, man. Let's just think about that. That oh yeah, that sounds great. Oh, sounds true. incredible. Yeah. Stop those buff balls in their tracks. Are oh, you coming Damn. in? Instant cast, instant cast earthquake. Mm. That sounds that mm. sounds great actually. So yeah, I, I'm super geeked about that combination. Although I I totally agree. I, I'm kind of trying to be a contrarian and shirk the meta right now. I don't want to play warlock. Warlock is is so fun. I, I've got mine at level two. I think I've played one raid, <laughs> and, and I love playing the warlock but i'm right. I'm trying not to do the meta thing right now go a little counterculture mr said, strange no you so bad but i'm not i can't really go against what you guys are saying either i think everyone's gonna go cleric especially with like the upcoming changes to to how much damage will be output like you have to have a reset and the only way to reset is with a cleric heal if you're taking a 200 percent headshot at ranged unless so we I, get druid at the same time oh true true mm, or, or unless um, like you, you just take potion chugger from barbarian then you got resets in a can i don't 20 percent is really not that great like it, it's good for sure and like you can take some mh on it but compared to like just throwing on a quick oh, yeah, heal, like that's so easy man just lesser heal you know, well lesser heal really whatever. isn't isn't oh, that strong sh- without true. magic healing so you, that, you want to change that, that to gear i'm just playing like devil's advocate here yeah no that that is true There's so much hybrid um, gear though like like sank i guess at least sank. i don't know mm. there's um, so much like hybrid something gear right i hear but, you though yeah, I think everyone's gonna take cleric in some form or fashion, whether it be like their earthquakes or like uh like I think holy well at least before today's nerf, I thought holy strike was fucking insane. Um I don't know, maybe like a magic damage rogue, maybe just to be different, and then you go like mm. judgment and I don't know what else. Just Rogue smite, ru- some smite, rupture, poison, rogue. Just yeah, yeah, and then smite, you get like rupture. you get like shadow touch. So that's like a free. Oh, free and shadow touch. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, smite my. divine strike. Um, on road, oh, of course, with poison of weapons yeah smite or i like yeah smite divine strike ignite smite, divine poison strike, weapon ignite no that's too many active skills because you have to take their spell meditation yeah, yeah you want passives i think yeah you need, you need mostly passives because you only have two yeah. skills uh, you, oh yeah you, poison you shadow like, touch like, as right, far yeah. as perks go for actual direct damage right we have poison we have shadow touch like who else has direct damage on a perk uh oh it's like maybe like slayer something from having Two weapons out, a dual wield, yeah, right? That, yeah, that works. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and then because now you're like that's, now you're talking about like speed. dagger, hand crossbow, or something. I, I don't know. Slay, Slayer is. I so have to see like a chart. Damage. Like a lot of people ask me in chat, and I just don't know how to answer because like it's hard to picture all everyone's perks and everyone's skills. But like, also it's gonna be RNG as fuck, right? So, like, I, I, I'm like, just terrified. I'm just terrified of barbarians with sprint. That's my biggest fear. I go to bed at night and I wake up in hot sweats, just like <laughs> having nightmares about barbarians with sprint. 
That yeah. terrifies me, bro. He threw up 16 times thinking about it. I don't, yeah. I don't know about rage anymore, man. That negative 25% armor, that fucking hurts. Yeah, why take that one? You could just take sprint, and it's just better in every way. Crazy. Yeah. True. Yep. Shit. The barbarian's fine. It's probably just fine, dude. It'll be. You know, yeah. Like, yeah it's oh, so you don't you don't see them that much anymore in solos. Yeah, they're they're not. You don't see them anywhere. Not they're not in solos. They're not in duos. They're not all of for trios. They're not just running you down with seventy five percent PDR and MDR. Yeah, that's fine. Honestly, I'm glad plus all is back because like I really miss just getting stat checked every game. <laughs> now we're back here. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we are an hour and 45 minutes in already, fellas. We got to save some for the next one. Um, yeah, should we Should we move Q&A. to Q&A? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's, let's chat with Chad for a little bit. Yeah. All We're right, guys. be released back into my goblin caves. That's where the money's at. No, we well, 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 we have some questions. How is the new caves? I haven't played, so not the cave the new, anyway. I mean, the new caves is the old caves. And the old oh, the old caves, caves but the, 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 not at his back. So, like, you Dude, I hope they put, fucking I, great. I hope they put trios back in caves now that it's an actual playable map and it doesn't crash and run like dog shit. Nah. I actually liked the map as a trios map. It just was unplayable. No, nah, you guys are locked to crypts, all right? Give us uh, give us our, our just desserts, all right? This is our map. This is so... So, uh, how many people are in the Goblin Caves now? Nine or ten. Yeah, it's Nine or ten, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Do you think that's enough for too many, or... I think it's perfect. Like I, I sometimes 25? don't see that many people, and sometimes I see like quite a few. Do you think it more would be good. better? No. Um. Well. Uh, okay. The main issue lies in the elos, right? Like right now, I'm in like free low, and so I, I get like a free run of both bosses a lot. I get like all the artifacts, but at least during the tournament, like when the issue is when you have too many players or even like a couple of good players, you can't boss anymore. Just like Inferno, like they're, they're yeah, well, yeah, you. that's a problem with everything. That's like a setting is a separate issue where I feel like once you're in the boss room, I feel like the door should just lock. See, so you, once you're fighting the boss, you fight until the boss is dead or you're dead, and then there's like a couple of seconds, maybe like five seconds, three seconds, whatever, until the door's unlocked, and that's then someone bad. can come in. Yeah, because like you, you not not enough time. time to full reset, but like do you soft reset, break yourself, yeah. ready for a fight at a disadvantage. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. You could surge kit and hide inside the troll, and then they have to decide if you're a rogue or not. And so, yeah, like I don't know, like I, more players can fit in there, but like it really comes down to what what do you want? Like, do you want chaos? Do you want always fighting, or do you want like the mix? I think it's it's a good amount. Yeah. <clears throat> My thought for the three by three five was perfect. Like I literally asked Iron Mace to go from seven to five. We went to five, three by three, nine nine or ten seems good. Yeah, five yeah. five was the arena mode. Speaking of arena, we should get the we should get the to uh chat questions but all right we haven't heard anything about arena how are we still all feeling about arena we talked a little bit about it earlier but i was thinking about arena uh earlier today and i was like how are they gonna do it i don't know how they're gonna do it but i was thinking back to when i played albion and one of the coolest things in albion i think were um i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with albion but hellgates basically like portals would spawn randomly on the map and you can go to them and like your team you can go into this hellgate and somewhere else on the map there is another random portal that another team of three could go into and then you would basically be in like a 3v3 with some mobs in between you in like in like this hell setting and wouldn't it be cool in dark and darker if like you just randomly got a rare portal a rare triple portal spawn in 3v3 that's like led you to a 3v3 arena and somewhere else in another game mode somebody else got a portal as well and you just met in this astral plane and that was your arena like so it was it would be tied to the in-game dungeon experience Naraka has something like that. We've made comparisons. Always, with, always in Naraka. Naraka has these like <laughs> it's it's actually really yeah. cool. You you get these like portals that spawn on separate por- parts of the map, and everybody gets told that they spawn there. Um, and when you go, the first team that gets to either one of them enters this like arena that goes. It's all just completely by itself, and it's this arena where you fight each other, and the winning team gets rewards, but the losing team doesn't lose anything, and then you both just return to the map. Oh, that's cool. Actually, I, I like that for our game too. Like, you go to an astral plane, like Ken said, and the winner gets like X, like a chest, like um, mm-hmm. maybe like two marvelouses, and then you both go back to your own lobbies. That would actually be super hype. Yep. I I I would love for I I would I still want an arena mode by itself, especially because I just I'm a fucking old old school WoW arena nerd, and I want a ranked ladder to cr- climb because yeah, yeah, I will yeah. play the fuck out of it. But talking about like stuff like this in game i would also love that that would just be sick maybe 
that's how they could determine who gets to fight a boss. You just get rights to the boss. You go show up at a boss room and like there's a timer uh, in Inferno and teams have to get to one of the doors and step up and then be there when the timer counts down. And if both, if there's two teams there, the teams have to fight each other in a vacuum. Whoever wins gets the rights to face the boss or maybe even the other team just dies straight out. Um, and then if it's like only one team shows up, they just by default get the, the rights to fight the boss. That could be a way to solve. I mean, I, I don't care that much about boss third parties because they don't really happen that often. It's kind of fun sometimes when you beat a team while you're fighting the boss. Uh, but it could be just a cool new way to introduce that kind of thing. And maybe that would be better for solos. Two players could show up at the boss room and they got to duke it out to figure out who gets the boss. I think that sounds horrible. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like having having to fucking straight up fight somebody else like that. Uh, so much like yeah. class and balance. You there, fucking like, rats and solos, dude, man. The rats, this is why like, you guys. You just this is why you guys love your five by five. You, you literally just rats. made the rats unable to do anything. Like we're just gonna get three v three and crips. Like we're just fucked. Like I just gotta fight Repos' team. Like why can't I pull bastards. a bunch of shit onto them? You uh, yeah, no, it goes both ways. It's like I, I like give us back five by five crypts so we can make twenty five k an hour yes, fucking killing the boss and nobody nobody comes and fights me because uh, they've so got their own boss so to fight. I yeah. love my I love fucking my solo rats. player goblin games. Uh, man, some of them are all fighting rats. centipedes. Some are like mining. Uh, so fucking great. <laughs> crypts is sweaty <laughs> as shit. This, this guy's guy part of the rogue mafia. Bro. How this this guy's a teamer. Go to Reddit, bro. Dude, he's got an alt account. You know he does. Out here charisma checking. The unofficial right, teamer. So <laughs> my chat wants to. Uh, one of the questions they had was, "How do we feel about a, an SSF mode?" Because we haven't we haven't talked about that I in a while. One. I want one real bad. Is this a test server thing? Like, will the? I think probably what yeah. would be best would be an end of season. Like they already talked about having an end of wipe event. Like they want to do actual events in the future. And mm -hmm. so I think like a one week SSF league would be fucking sick. I should yeah, be P more than a does this all the time. SSF leagues like they do like short SSF. Race mm -hmm. leagues, which are some of them are a week long, some are two weeks, some are a month long. It doesn't really matter the time frame, but the the point is that there is a time frame, and they usually they usually do it towards the end of a league uh, or a season. So, like, say for instance, this this season is three months. The last two weeks, they'd be okay. SSF league, it gets everybody back who is like, they taking a break. They're like, okay, let's try this new thing. They come back, it's fun. They have fun, and then all of a sudden they're jazzed up for the new season. Like that's like the point of right. this. And I think that's exactly where a solo self found uh, kind of thing would fit. Spot mm -hmm. on. Yep. And, and yeah. just to clarify what solo self end is to people that don't know it, it's basically there's like no marketplace, like only event, but you basically you go in with nothing. You can't trade with people. You can only wear the stuff that you get from raid and you have to like build your kits from your adventures. And if you die, you lose it all and you have to start over. Kind of like how the game was when we all first started playing playing mm -hmm. back in the playtest when exactly yeah there was one stash nobody knew what the fuck they were doing you had one extra kid if you were good at the game yeah, if you're lucky yeah yeah but as far I, as i would love to try it i, 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 think I would I, love to try that i think arena needs its own ranking system and it should only be open like one or two weekends a month or like every weekend or something and then i, I think you, it's you fine climb. if it's just open a couple hours like like dungeon yeah World. if it's just open sleep. a couple hours like you could even have like an eu and an na time so it's open like two hours in the morning and then two hours at night for like both both you know regions or a couple regions and then it, you just you climb up to demigod and then you get some shit next season based on your rank that season and it's like nothing insane it's like another gold coin bag if you make it to like you know wander or something i mean really people is. have already been like pseudo doing this like whenever we got bored at the end of last season we would just do i would do a stream with my friends we'd be all right this is our solo self-found hardcore fist abyss stream where yeah. we death delete on death where you can't use the market you go in it's level one and you just like with your fists and you try to zero to hero and until you when you die you delete your character but you're already doing this it just like wasn't an official mode so and it is a lot of fun so like mm -hmm. it's definitely something they could experiment with i think we need more social stuff in the game too like if we're gonna have the arena i hope we're also gonna have like because the arena is like here's the sweat mode but if we have if we get the sweat mode, we should also have like the the town square mode where people can have like fucking they can bet on duels and fight each other in town, play card yeah. games and shit. Go to the so go someone to the in chat is like the jump. I, I want to hang out in lobbies where you could talk and trade and gamble. It's like basically what you're saying, just like more social things. Tavern, which is yeah. Like a, a, yeah, a tavern or a guild hall. I mentioned or, this you know, a few weeks ago where the, the gathering hall. 
again the the Naraka lobby system where it's just like somewhere <laughs> you can just hang out and just run around and do shit, and it's. Yeah. It doesn't affect the game you in any way. It's just a social center. Play a little VR, chess. VR, maybe maybe throw, throw, throw some yeah, dice. Bet, bet some ruby silver powder. I would fuck. I could fuck with some VR chat. Dark and darker. That would be fun. Trying to pair each other's swords and shit. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Did you guys ever play Puzzle Pirates? No. No. Oh, damn. I don't want to get too far into it. But the part that was cool is basically you're out on a ship and you have to like raid krakens and monsters and other player ships and you get pieces of eight. It's like a little pirate currency. But you could go to like a social hub and you could like throw dice or play like Texas Hold'em or whatever. And I would be out for like fucking six hours when I was a kid, just like grinding and like fighting on other players' ships and like trying to make little pieces of eight. And then I would go and I would lose all my money gambling. And then I would have to like, I'd have to just go back out and be like, fuck, I just got to go like, I, I, I can see like decks for six hours. Dude, young like, sub train just out yeah, on the open sorry, ocean grinding sorry, the hard pirate's life comes home oh, from a, a long day on the seas <laughs> fucking smokes a cigarette is gambling his fucking gold the blooms away <laughs> it was honestly swabbing that fucking bag, horrible man. dude i'm like i'm like swabbing the cannons i'm like fucking i was like the game worked on like a pirate scale right it's like whoever owned a was ship a like VR a captain game? no no they'd get like 70 percent of the profits right and then you're like you're like top crewmen would get like eight percent each and then your little shitters would get like five percent so I'm out there working all day for pennies, dude. I just lose it all. And I it sounds awesome, but I think if you bring that system to dark and darker, like it's gonna be bad. Right? Like if you can actually but in gamble. A good way. Bad good. Yes, but no. Like okay, so when I was in Hawaii X amount of time ago, we had the the trade guild, the collector's guild, allowed gambling for golden keys. Oh yeah. Right. And Iron Mace came in and they shut that down because people were losing their fucking shit. They were losing like their whole wife's worth of wealth. That's in, like... their fault. <laughs> right. Gamble responsibly, goddammit. <laughs> okay, but I agree with you, but also no, dude. Also no. Uh, I think if you bring gambling into our game, yeah, that, people are gonna that get shit real. was live on the Discord for like gambling, okay? a couple of days. Uh, it was shut down in like a day. Like, yeah, my friend, my friend Mazzelli totally in one day was like in debt 35 keys. Yeah, it's like asking for loans. I was like, I'm sick. I'm like, oh, oh god, sick, dude. <laughs> like he's. Like I worked all white for that. It was like ninety days of keys. <laughs> yeah, but what if? But what if you won, bro? But what if you won, dude? What if you won? <laughs> you, true. Dude, I you bet more time. I could get a cinder. You know? If you just bet one more time, you would have won. Why'd you stop? <laughs> God damn. I'm gonna add right, a fine. new merchant or traveler. That'll be the the counselor. So after you lose so much, you have to go and do a quest for the counselor in order to be able to gamble again. God. <laughs> I, was, I love it. Fucking start gambling, dude. I, I do want to see Dark and Darker. Like, we're in, I think, one of the problems that Dark and Darker has that has become alleviated by normals becoming so good, but still sort of has to some degree. Is it's, it's like a lot of fl frustration, but nowhere to really blow off steam. Again, normals is kind of fixing this, but I just I want to see Dark and Darker evolve into a more complex ecosystem that isn't just the dungeon delving part because it just has, it has so much charm. And I would love to see the game have more of a community element yeah, to it. Within it the should game. just be the gathering hall. You, you should just be able to go into the gathering hall. It could be like fifty a fifty player slot. You just go in there. There would just be vendors, a chessboard. You, you yeah. can gamble if you want. If you want to get risque, you could void. You can inspect gear. You know, like you could maybe duel Give if you us wanted a to. Fantasy land to live in. Okay, I want to strap on a. You, you, your, your target, like, your target dummy is there. there. Yeah. Your target dummies are autos there, just hanging out, vibing, pet the yeah. dog. You know, dude. Yes, we need a place for auto. Yeah. Somewhere okay, you can right. hang out that's just not a, a blank spreadsheet screen. This works too because it's a gold sink. Like immediately, I want to buy like fancy fucking chess pieces, and I want to have like a sweet costume. Yeah, I want to go in there. I want to show. I'm gonna go hand out ale to the the people. Like some dumb shit. Just like have fun. Yeah. All right. So yeah. guild halls and then tavern VR space for. We got, we can have karaoke now. We can go in there and sing. Oh, SDF like... will come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, was he here for that? <laughs> no, I wasn't. Was. Is, 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 is he? No. Yeah, dude, yesterday for that when we were 15 minutes out from the so pad. That's funny, dude. Indefinitely. Yeah, 15 minutes. And yeah, 15 more. It was because uh, yeah, SCF was... was in Japan doing karaoke. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have an excuse, like that's the right one. So karaoke. <laughs> Alright, boys. What other questions we got? No uh, questions on this end. No questions. Boys are yelling quiet at me. Uh, they, they want to see us in the dungeon. That's just yeah. The they want to get matter. back it's in there. 9 p.m. We're... It's time for goblins and artifacts. Yeah, Gents, I don't any questions really? Yeah, I'm down to call it there. It's been a good yeah. one. Another yes. one in the books. Good wipe. A good patch. 
very exciting time for Dark and Dark. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so yep. the, pad, the patch was great because like the 200% headshot like didn't work properly. So like, good job <laughs> on failing Iron Mace. It's yep. gonna you, be you, annoying. You failed properly. So good job. Yep. Successfully. Look, it's gonna be annoying, but we're no matter what, we will all persevere and we'll have our fun playing Counter Strike with ops for a week. Okay, we're all win last each other, and then we'll laugh about it in a month when they were. Oh, oh well, one last question for Subash Range. Uh, when when's Druid? Oh, uh, okay. Actually, I have a, a perfect answer. For this. I've been getting asked so much minutes. about. No, no, I have an actual answer now. So, in one of the upcoming content patches when they release Druid, that's when Druid's going to appear. It's the same hey. with Ice Dragon. It's the same with Arena. When that content patch comes out, that's just going to be out. out. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. Dark Grove armor on the way. Rat form. I love it. Oh, so wise, so wise. Mm -hmm, I got you. Between now and when it releases, it will it will release. Paul, I can't think of a better note to end on than that. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. From yeah, Yoda himself. All right, hold the line, boys. Hold the line, all. Thanks, everybody, in the chat, yeah. across all the chats. We will see you next week, hopefully. Right, guys? Is, that's the plan. Yeah, next Thursday I'm night. Good, yeah. We'll get back right. to our weekly thing. This was all fun. Right. We'll do this again soon. All right. Awesome. Peace. Later, boys. We'll see y'all. Goodbye, boys.